Live on a Wednesday morning, it's Utah Grizzlies hockey. As it's the first road game of the regular season, as the Grizzlies are over at Extreme Arena to take on the Iowa Heartlanders. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Utah Grizzlies hockey. As it's very early in the morning, in fact, it's the earliest the Grizzlies have ever had to play a road opener. Um, obviously, there every other road opener has been at night, but it's the eighth regular season for game for the Grizzlies and first on the road. In fact, the Grizzlies are the last team in the league to play their road opener. And it's obviously an early one against Pete and Jones and the Iowa Heartlanders. Uh, Utah is taking on Iowa in a three game series today, as well as Friday night and Saturday evening. Uh, the Grizzlies last year on the road had a record of 16, 16 and four. And they're also pretty good in the postseason. They were 2-0-1 in the playoff series against against Idaho, winning the first two games of the first-round series on the road, and then obviously game six, uh, losing in overtime. So the Grizzlies, you know, if they want to be a playoff team, if they want to be a contending team this season, they're going to have to find a way to play well away from Maverick Center. Uh, the Grizzlies, we mentioned, at a winning homestand. They went 4-3, and three, including winning two straight against the Tulsa Oilers to start the regular year before losing three straight, two to I Idaho, and then one to Wichita. Grizzlies have won, won two in a row. They're looking to win their third in a row this morning. As last Friday, the Grizzlies overcame a 4-1 deficit as Brandon Cutler and Jordan Martell just took over the third period, and Utah overcame a 4-2 deficit after two periods to win 5-4. to four. And then on Saturday... There is no doubt about Utah's 4-1 victory as they outshot the Thunder 48-20. to we'll Watch out for the shot count tonight and see if the Grizzlies can capitalize the way they have the last four periods where they took 66 shots on the Wichita Thunder. Obviously, Iowa's got a very familiar goaltender to Grizzlies fans' eyes, and that's Peyton Jones. And Obviously, he's going to be a big storyline this afternoon as he'll be going up against Utah's Trent Miner. Will be making his fifth start this season. Miner's got a record of two and two with a 9.14 save percentage and 2.52 goals against average. A one roster move as Gianni Fairbrother was reassigned from the AHL's Colorado Eagles onto the Grizzlies, and he'll be in the lineup this afternoon. Fairbrother has two assists in four games with Utah. He's got an NHL entry level deal with the Colorado Avalanche. Uh, he was acquired in a trade with the Montreal Canadiens this past off season. Fairbrother, a former draft pick of Montreal. Uh, it's going to be a good one here this afternoon. Hopefully we'll be able to watch it as unfortunately we are not there and we're just going to be at the mercy of the video feed that we get on Flow Sports. Hopefully it'll be a lot of fun this morning. And remember, both teams usually are on the ice about this time of day anyway. It would be morning skate for the Heartlanders at this particular moment and the Grizzlies would have morning skate in about I'd say 40 minutes from now. So they would, you know, both teams are used to being at the arena at this particular time. The only difference is they're going to have to play 60 minutes of hockey. Now, remember with the early start, the Grizzlies are going to have to bring some energy and momentum uh, early on in this game. And we'll talk about Pete and Jones a little bit later on and how important it is for the Grizzlies to get a couple goals early on the former netminder of, of Utah who's in his fourth season as a pro out of Penn State. Uh, should be a lot of fun when we come back. We'll talk about which Grizzlies are on fire so far as Martell and Brandon Cutler have certainly played well for Utah. And watch out for Brett Stapley, who put together a really strong first impression in a Grizzlies uniform last weekend against Wichita. The 4-3 and three Utah Grizzlies take on the 3-4-2 and two Iowa Heartlanders. And we'll come back and continue with the pregame show as we're in business on a Wednesday morning. And you're listening to the Grizzlies Hockey Network, presented by Rio Tinto Kennecott. This isn't just copper. It's our job. It's food on our family's tables. Without it, we couldn't stay in touch. It's what keeps our homes warm and our lights on. It's the power behind the team and a greener, brighter future. This isn't just copper. It's a proud Utah and a strong America. Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or ice. Enjoy a fresh cup today. Welcome back to Utah Grizzlies Hockey. It's the fourth all-time meeting between the Grizzlies and the Heartlanders. Utah swept Iowa in a three-game series at Iowa in the 2021-22 season. That's when the Grizzlies won the Mountain Division for the first time in team history. 
of course, not a lot of familiar names to Grizzlies fans in the Iowa lineup, uh, but there is a familiar name in goaltender Peyton Jones, who will get the start in net for Utah as he played with the Grizzlies for two seasons back in 2021 and 22. Uh, Jones with the Grizzlies had a record of 25, 15, and 4. Uh, for his ECHL career, he's got an even 900 save percentage and 3.16 goals against average. And there's no doubt that Peyton Jones right now is a hot goaltender. He is the reigning league goaltender of the week, which is the first time a Heartlander goaltender has ever won the award. And this is their third year of existence. Jones won all three games for Iowa last week, allowing three goals on 90 shots. And what we know from Peyton Jones in his time with the Grizzlies as he can be a pretty streaky goaltender. I think about the time in Rapid City a couple years ago when he stopped 49 of 50 and all seven in a shootout as Utah won 2-1 to one as they beat Lucas Preak over in Rapid City in what was an outstanding goaltender duel. And then the next night, Peyton Jones allowed four in the first period. The Grizzlies ended up losing 10-2, to two, and Jones was pulled after one period. That's the kind of goaltender he has been as a pro. He has bouts where he can be absolutely outstanding, and obviously, he's got the athletic ability, 6'4", about 200 pounds. Um, he, he's capable of being outstanding. But if he allows a couple goals early, he can certainly be shaky, and we can end up seeing the backup Drew DeRitter uh, later on this afternoon. So uh, you never you never really know which Peyton Jones you're going to get. Um, obviously, he's got good bloodlines. His brother, Nolan Jones, uh, really had a breakout season with the Colorado Rockies, the outfielder who's got a ton of talent, probably about a five-tool player. He's got a great arm and and a good bat with a ton of power. And so obviously a very athletic family Peyton Jones comes from. And it's interesting to see him matched up with Trent Miner as those guys were teammates a couple years ago in the division championship season. Uh, Miner, the Grizzlies shutout king, 10 shutouts in a Grizzlies uniform, including seven in the 2021-22 season. So we got a good goaltending matchup here this afternoon. Um, obviously we mentioned not a lot of familiar names to the Iowa club. Uh, their leading scorer this season is Jesse Jocks, who's got four goals and four assists. But oddly enough, Jocks is on the fourth line for Iowa, as it looks like they've got a pretty deep forward unit. From what I hear, the uh, Heartlanders do have good team speed, and we'll go over the starting lineups here in a couple minutes as face-off. We believe is going to be at 9.35 Mountain Time, 10.35 locally over in Iowa. It's one of those games where you got a ton of kids in attendance uh, with the field trip game. And so, obviously, the crowd's going to be lively uh, for this morning showdown. And for the Grizzlies, obviously, you want to extend your winning streak to three games. And, you know, the third week of the season, the Grizzlies had the bye week, and it didn't necessarily come at a great time as the Grizzlies are still building their identity and still building uh, their chemistry as a unit. And the Grizzlies, obviously, last week got off to a bit of a slow start, losing 4-2 to two to Wichita in the series opener. Uh, before really rebounding, playing well in the second half of Friday night's game. And I thought the Grizzlies played their best 60 minutes of hockey this past Saturday. And that's really what Ryan Knaswich and Christian Horn want from their unit is to play a full 60 minutes, and especially to get ahead early. Because obviously Ryan Knaswich knows Peyton Jones inside and out. He knows the scouting report. There are five players on the current Grizzlies club who were teammates of Peyton Jones a couple years ago. That includes Trent Miner and four skaters, Tyler Penner, Dylan Fitz, Dakota Raby, and Brandon Cutler were the most experienced of the Grizzlies players or the longest tenured players uh, for the Grizzlies. And so obviously they know the scouting report. And I think the Grizzlies know that if Peyton Jones makes some saves early, he could settle in and play a, a pretty good game. So really it's going to be interesting to see the shot count for the Grizzlies early on. And obviously since these teams are not very familiar with each other, we'll see if there's any of that filling out process in the first period, but both teams are just trying to figure out the strengths and weaknesses of the other. It's obviously a unique background with it being a morning game. Uh, we've been given the starting lineup from Iowa broadcaster, David fine. And when we come back in 30 seconds, we'll give you the starting lineups for both teams. It's the Grizzlies and the Heartlanders over at Extreme Arena, and I'm hanging out in the office at Maverick Center. As I don't, we need to, we need a name, a name for this place. It's that studio right next to the Grizzlies team store. Uh, we're in the unnamed, undisclosed location, even though everybody knows what it is now. Uh, we'll come up with a name for this place by the end of this thing, and we'll have some fun along the way. And uh, hopefully, the video producer does his job so I can do mine. We'll come back and give you the starting lineups in 30 seconds after this word from America First Credit Union. Since 1939, America First has helped people start businesses, buy homes and cars, and achieve their financial goals. 
Today, our top priority is still the financial success of you and your family, which is why we're giving new members $100 when they sign up for a basic savings and checking account and another $100 when they upgrade to premium checking and enroll in and use direct deposit. So head to AmericaFirst.com today and join the credit union that always puts its members first. Welcome back to Utah Grizzlies Hockey. I'm Tyson Whiting. Here are the starting lineups for both teams. First for the homestanding Iowa Heartlanders, who are 3-1-1 and at home. They've got a record of 3-4-2. and They're led by head coach Derek Damon. Starting in net, the fourth-year product out of Penn State, Peyton Jones. He's got a record of 3-2-1 and with a 2.76 goals against average and 9-12 save percentage. Jones is the reigning league goaltender of the week. Starting forwards. Jake Derflinger, number 16. He's got two goals and four assists in eight games. Derflinger uh, played with the Iowa Heartlanders last year and had 20 points, 10 goals, and 10 assists in 50 games. Derflinger is going to be wearing number 16. Will Calverly is wearing number 18. Calverly played for the Florida Everblades at the end of last season following a college career where he played at Merrimack. Um, Calverly actually scored the game-winning goal in Game Three of the Kelly Cup Finals against the Iowa uh, against the Idaho Steelheads. So Calverly uh, really contributed to that championship unit in the postseason. He's wearing number 18, 5'10 and 175 pounds. And Liam Coughlin, the former Worcester Railer, is in there. He actually faced uh, the Grizzlies as a member of Worcester in 52 games last year for the Railers. He had 10 goals and 12 assists this season. Coughlin has three points in nine games. The starting forwards are Durflinger. Calverly and Liam Coughlin. That's the top forward line for Iowa as it stands out. Their second forward line is David is Davis Kosh, number 17, Louis Boudon, number 40, and Yuki Miura, the, uh, the native of Japan. He'll be wearing number 36, Cameron Nault, Odin Tufto, and Max Chaikovic. Chaikovic, who played for Orlando last year. That's the third line forwards. Nick Campoli and Jesse Jocks, the fourth line forwards. Jocks. Uh, is the leading scorer for the Heartlanders so far this season with eight points. Starting defensive pairing for Iowa, uh, Ben Brinkman, number four. He's a big guy, 6'1", 220 pounds, who played last season at Notre Dame University. He'll be in there. He's got one assist in nine games. And the captain, Kevin McKernan, uh, can we call him a former Grizzly? He was traded to the Grizzlies a few years ago but never reported. McKernan, one assist in nine games. He'll be wearing number seven. He is 5'11 and 192 pounds. Other defensemen are Hunter Lelig and Landon Kozier, as well as Justin Wells and Nolan Orzek. There will be a quiz on all those Iowa players in the second intermission. Now for the visiting Utah Grizzlies, led by Ryan Kanasiewicz, who's back on the bench, and we're certainly thinking of Coach Kanasiewicz, who missed last week with a family emergency. Starting in net is going to be Trent Miner, third-year pro, who played his junior hockey with the Vancouver Giants of the WHL. Miner in four games this year has got a record of two and two with a 2.52 goals against average and 914 save percentage. Starting defensive pairing for the Grizzlies is Kyle Mayhew, who played at University of Denver and won a national championship back in 2022. He's got two goals and one assist in seven games. He'll be paired up with the captain, Josh Wesley. He was wearing number 20. Wesley had two power play assists on Saturday night in the Grizzlies' 4-1 victory. So Mayhew and Wesley are the starting defensive pairing. We'll also see Gianni Fairbrother, uh, Brian Yoon, who's got an assist in three straight games, as well as Corey Thomas and Keone Teixeira is in his sixth season as a pro. 11 forwards for the Grizzlies tonight. The starting forwards, Dakota Raby, who's going to be on the left wing. Raby has two assists in four games. Uh, Brandon Cutler will be in there as well. He'll be the starting center. Uh, Cutler, four goals and three assists in seven games. He was outstanding. He was the number one star on Friday night, scoring the game-tying and game-winning goals, both on assists from Jordan Martell, who's also in the starting lineup. The Rooster has seven points this season. As the Rooster has three goals and four assists, that's certainly an outstanding starting pairing of or a trio of Raby, Cutler, and Martell. We will also see Brett Stapley, who had one goal and one assist on Saturday. He was the game's number two star. Nathan Burke, who played at Bowling Green. In fact, he was a teammate of Iowa defenseman Hunter Lelig at Bowling Green last season. Uh, Burke's had an outstanding start to the year, four goals and two assists in seven games. And Cole Gallant, the Western Michigan products, also in there wearing number 25. Gallant had some good scoring chances on Saturday night, so watch out for him. Uh, the, the third line forward certainly were outstanding. 
on Saturday night. Mick Messner has got an assist in two straight. Of course, the Ironman Tyler Penner's in there once again. For some reason, I got a feeling Penner's going to have an outstanding game this evening or this morning. And Dylan Fitz, who had two goals on Saturday, uh, Fitz was the number one star in the 4-1 victory. We'll also see Jared Power scored his first goal of the year last Saturday. And Dean Yakur, the 30, 38-year-old who's outstanding on the Grizzlies penalty kill unit. It's Utah and Iowa. 20 minutes are on the stadium scoreboard clock. And I want to beg for some patience from the YouTube audience that's listening to this game as I am at the mercy of the Flow Sports feed that we're getting. That's the only way I'm able to see this game. So please, I'm not being, I'm not being able to describe the game the way I want to. Um, so have some patience with me. I'll try to describe what I see, but unfortunately, sometimes um, I'm not able to see necessarily the details that I want to see. Grizzlies and Heartlanders, two beautiful logos on the Flow Sports screen. Draws going to be at center ice. Grizzlies in the white jerseys with black numbers and professional green trim. Iowa skating from right to left. They win the faceoff. They've got a black jersey with really tough numbers to spot. Grizzlies have it as they're at neutral ice. Carrying across center ice. Now it goes to Josh Wesley. Drops it off for Cutler. Cutler right side. Lefty shot save. Rebound shot save by Jones. As the Heartlanders will lift it out towards center ice. Mayhew chasing after it. As it goes to Utah. Grizz skate from left to right. Mayhew gets spun around at center ice and falls down. I think that's Liam Coughlin. Boy, the Iowa numbers are incredibly difficult to spot. Now centering pass shot. And it goes wide as it couldn't handle it. Mayhew moves ahead to center ice as Brett Stapley dumps it in. Stapley number seven in his third game for the Grizzlies as Peyton Jones stops it and gets it over towards Hunter Lelig, number five. He throws a left-wing pass now up ahead as Iowa chases after it as Corey Thomas gets there in front of his heartlander as Johnny Fairbrother moves it ahead. As Cole Gallant, left-wing pass, goes just wide of Nathan Burke. He chases after it as everybody continues to skate deep in the Iowa zone. As looks like there's a lot of people dressed as empty seats so far, moving along with the kids. As left wing, Grizzly shot, saved by Jones. As Utah with their first shot of the game. As we're past a minute in, no score. As the Heartlanders get to center ice, they try to dump it in. Texera pokes it away. As goes to Utah, as they get hit at center ice. As hacking away is number 14. And that's Justin Wells, the defenseman, as Iowa's going with 11 forwards and six defensemen tonight. Iowa spins along the near wing boards. It's in the Heartlander zone, right point. As Brian Yoon fires a righty shot, glove saved by Jones. And the former Grizzlies netminder holds on. Obviously, that's a big storyline from the Grizzlies' perspective as Peyton Jones, who played with the Grizzlies for two seasons back in 2021 and 2022. Grizzlies have taken the first two shots of the game. As Jones wearing the Heartlanders, Colored gear, and the numbers are incredibly difficult to spot when they go to the wide angle. Penner in there for the Grizzlies. He takes the draw off it. Nestor with a shot, and it's blocked. Fitz skates towards the far corner. He gets it, and it bounces off a of Heartlander. Messner on one knee goes down as he battles along the far wing boards. Fitz hacks away, so is Messner and two Heartlanders. Iowa clears it out. As it goes past Tech Shara, Brian Yoon chasing after it as the linesman enthusiastically raises his right arm, and icing is on Iowa as we get a whistle with 18.05 left in the first. Referee tonight is Michael Zyla. The linesmen are Jack McQuiston and Riley Hickey. First time we've seen Michael Zyla, I believe, this season. As Penner takes a draw against Louis Boudon, number 40. Boudon wins the draw. Iowa skates from right to left as they move it ahead. As they get to center ice to try to get it back to Boudon, it bounced off his stick. Grizzlies will roll it towards Peyton Jones as Iowa chases after it. And Utah's called for icing again with 17.52 left in the first. We're still early on, so grab some coffee, a little bit of tea and honey if you want, and enjoy a little bit of Wednesday morning with us. I'm pretty sure everybody's either in the office or they're trying to find a way to get out of, um, you know, to get out of work. Hopefully everybody's enjoying their morning. Penner will take the draw against Nick Campoli, number 89. Campoli last season in 12 games of Iowa had one goal and two assists. Grizzlies win the draw. Now it goes back to Campoli, who dumps it into the far corner. Brian Yoon gets it, and he moves it ahead. As it goes to Messner, trying to get to Dylan Fitz, but Iowa picked it off. Now it goes back to Messner, who's in the far circle. Messner skates down the middle. He gets to center ice. He lifts it in. Iowa chases after it. Messner does as well as he gets cut off. Action in the Heartlander zone as Iowa gets it. They carry it across the zone. As it gets to center ice, Ben Brinkman, who's a big guy, Notre Dame product. Brinkman looks to center it, and the pass goes wide. Yakura challenges. Now right wing, righty shot goes wide. Grizzlies get it. Josh Wesley lifts it out to center ice, bouncing putt. Jared Power chases after it. So does Cole Galan, who's got outstanding speed. Brinkman gets there first, and he'll lob it towards the near wing boards. 
as Iowa lifts it out to center ice. Puck bounced out of play as it was near Josh Wesley and the Iowa captain, Kevin McKernan. Faceoff's going to go into the Heartlander zone. 17.04 left in the first. No score. Utah's taken two shots. Looks like Iowa's yet to take one on Trent Minor. Boy, if the camera's going to be anything like the first three minutes, I am in for a very, very long week. <laughs> we'll just try to do the best we can to describe it with what we have. Martell will take the draw. Iowa wearing a black jersey with really difficult numbers to spot on a wide angle. As Puck goes to the far side after Iowa initially won the draw, as the Heartlanders left wing pass towards the bench area. Bench area is on the near side of the ice. We see it on Flow Sports. Josh Wesley chases after it deep in the Grizzly zone over to Kyle Mayhew. Now the Grizzlies start the attack. The fast one, Dakota Raby gets the center ice. He dumps it in with speed. Raby chases after it as he gets hit in the corner. And that was by Landon Kozier, number 44. Iowa lifts it out to center ice. They chase after it. Gianni Fairbrother's got a step as he delivers a hit on Iowa. And Corey Thomas skates in to take the puck as the puck glides towards the Heartlander zone on a wide pass. As it goes to the right side, taking it is Ben Brinkman, the Notre Dame product, who's been active so far. He skates down the middle, now veers off to the left. Left wing chip towards neutralized. Now the Heartlanders cross center as Iowa gets it poked away by Nathan Burke as McKernan was trying to skate into the Grizzlies zone. Burke taps off the near wing boards, goes to Burke. Right side, lefty shot goes wide as he tried to go stick side on Jones. Puck glides along the far wing boards towards center ice. Stapley battles with a Heartlander. As Iowa towards neutral ice, Odin Tufto gets pushed by Texera. Another Heartlander defenseman dumps it in. Grizzlies chase after it. Yoon will roll it along the near wing boards. It goes past Cole Gallant, Cole Gallant to center ice. Heartlanders reset as Brinkman will throw it up to center ice. As left wing, as the Heartlanders chip it in, they get off the ice for a line change. Four and a half minutes in, still no score. Heartlanders yet to take a shot on Trent Minor. As Penner moves it ahead, sporting a mustache, passes wide as he was looking for Fitz at neutral ice. As it goes to center ice, Heartlanders dump it in. Grizzlies throw it back to center ice. As Iowa tried to dump it back in, everybody stopped skating as I believe the puck ended up out of play as Louis Boudin was in the area battling with Dylan Fitz. Draws going to be at neutral ice near the Grizzlies bench, which is on the near side of what we see on Flow Sports. As Tyler Penner will crouch down, crouch down to take the face off against Louis Boudin. Penner sporting a mustache, as some of the Grizzlies are. As goes to Iowa, Heartlanders win the faceoff. They throw it to the center ice logo, which is a deer. As Iowa dumps it in, Miner behind his net will tap it along the far wing wall. As it goes to Utah, as Dylan Fitz crosses center ice. Fitz veers off to the left as he gets the puck. As he'll roll it around you, uh, Iowa, Iowa's net, and it goes to the Heartlanders, who, lift, who carried out to center ice. Mayhew across to Fitz, who dumps it in. As Grizz chase after it, McMessner in particular, and it goes to the far corner as Fitz delivers a hit. As Puck goes to the left point, Grizzlies trying to shovel it ahead. Iowa picked it off. Hartlanders carried across center ice. Now they enter the zone as Davis Kosh will dump it off the end wall as Grizz get it back. Penner over to Fitz. Iowa picks it off. Centering pass, righty shot is blocked by Wesley. As Puck goes to the right side, Iowa rolls it along the wall as they chase after it in the corner. Wesley de de delivers a hit on Iowa. And the puck goes back around to the far side. Heartlanders whip a wrap back around to the left. As Liam Coughlin make that jocks, number 88, skates around Utah's net. It goes back to the Heartlanders. They feed it to the right point. Iowa skates towards the high slot. Lefty shot goes wide off the end glass as Wesley moves it ahead. Fitz chases after it as the puck wobbles on its side. And Hunter Lella gets it, but it looks like icing is on the Grizzlies. 14-01 left in the first period. Still no score. Iowa's now taking a shot on Trent Minor. Grizzlies have two. So it looks like that filling out process has taken place here as both teams aren't really familiar with each other. Uh, both teams would be on the ice about this time of day for morning skates, so it's not unusual for them to be in the building, but obviously playing a game is a little bit different than morning skate. Liam Coughlin takes a draw against Penner. Penner wins the faceoff as Wesley will tap it off the near glass. It's gloved and dropped by Iowa at center ice. As Stapley's on the ice for Utah, as Heartlanders enter from the right side, as Corey Thomas gets it behind Utah's net, as he gets hit by Calver Calverly, as Thomas... We'll throw it to Dean Yakura, who's on the right side. Yakura gets the center ice, moves ahead to Stapley as Iowa pokes it away. Heartlander skate from right to left as they enter the zone, as they veer off to the right. As Calverly looks to center, backhand shot, and Miner makes the save. Boy, the centering pass connected as they're trying to find Jake Durflinger out in front, 
and Miner made the save. It kind of bounced off of him, and he was able to corral it before it crossed the goal line. 13.30s left in the first period. No score. We're back in 30 seconds after this word from Affinity 56. with the nitro card at maverick you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon every day and you could save a whole lot more thanks to nitro best price pick up a nitro card and upgrade your adventure club account today 13 minutes 30 seconds left in the first period no score both teams have taken two shots brian yoon and brett stapley have utah shots will calverly and max chaikovich Chaikovic, who played for Orlando last year, both guys have Iowa shots. Good goaltending matchup. Trent Miner for Utah against Iowa's Peyton Jones, the former Grizzly. Uh, obviously, Miner and Jones were the goaltending duel, the law firm, a couple years ago. And uh, we've seen Peyton Jones play outstanding. We've also seen him get pulled in the first period. Obviously, he's settled in, and he's the reigning league goaltender of the week. So he's performed well for the Heartlanders as of late. The backup goaltender for Iowa is Drew uh, Derider and the backup goaltender for the Grizzlies is Dante Gianuzzi, who's in Iowa. I think I saw Garrett Metcalf in the parking lot yesterday, so it's possible that Gianuzzi ends up making his Grizzlies debut at some point in this series. 13.30s left in the first period. Iowa, right before the break, had a centering pass towards Derflinger. A minor was able to corral it near the goal line. I wonder if they're taking a look at it to see if the puck crossed the goal line. As some fans in attendance, it's field trip day. As we apologize, I mean, Iowa's got numbers that are very tough to describe on a wide angle. So we we apologize. Obviously, uh, we're working with uh, a limited budget uh, here. here. <laughs> we're working with the, just with the flow sports screen that we're seeing. And um, we're just going to try to describe the game the best we can. Draws in the Grizzlies zone far circle here in the first of a three game series. As Iowa wins the draws, they get towards Ben Brinkman. Left wing shot goes wide as... Grizzlies carried out of the zone, two on four. Utah tried to get to the rooster, goes back to Iowa. The rooster deflects it to the corner as deep in the Iowa zone. Grizzlies battle with Iowa as Cameron Nault trips up Corey Thomas. That should be a call. Grizzlies fire towards net. Yeah, a call is going to be made. Delayed penalty as Fairbrother centers it over, and the shot goes wide as he was trying to find a cutter out in front of the net. Fairbrother gets it left point. Play continues. Delayed penalty. Rooster, left wing, righty shot goes wide as it ricochets off the boards. Stapley over to Raby. Puck still in play. Fairbrother dances around the left point. He veers off to the right. Fairbrother fires a shot. Saved by Jones. And Iowa touches up. Corey Thomas got tripped in the left point, and the official spotted it. So the Grizzlies are going to be on the power play for the first time this morning. Uh, Utah is 23.8% on the power play. That's fifth best in the league as Cameron Nault goes to the penalty box. Iowa's penalty kill this year is 83.9%. Still no score. Grizzlies and Heartlanders have each taken three shots. As I think Cutler's taking the draw steeply, and Wesley are up top for Utah as the draw won by Iowa as they clear it out. Grizz skate from left to right as we see it on Flow Sports. Your mind's eye see it on YouTube as Josh Wesley gets it from Trent Miner behind the net. Watch out for Stapley. He had a power play goal on Saturday night. Wesley, two power play assists on Saturday, crosses center ice. He veers off to the right, drops it off for the rooster, but the Eagle Eye linesman calls Utah for offside. 12.26 left in the first. Not sure how much time's left on the power play. They don't have it on the score bug. As Martel, watch out for him on the Grizzlies power play on one-timers, and Dylan fits out in front of the net. That's how he scored Utah's first goal on Saturday in the 4-1 victory over Wichita. Draws going to be at new tries near the Iowa bench. The bench areas, as we see it, are on the near side. As draw one by, I believe, Utah. We never did see the face off. Martel dumps into the left corner. Iowa gets it, and they'll sell it out. As Grizz chase after it, Miner behind his net. We'll drop it off for Wesley, the Grizzlies captain. Wesley, over 160 games of AHL experience. He'll drop it off. Grizz get it out towards center ice. Rooster throws it back into the Grizzlies zone as Wesley chases after it. Grizzlies reset as behind the net. 
Grizz will start the attack from left to right. Martell crosses the center ice logo. Now he veers off to the left as Martell enters. He skates towards the corner. Iowa picks it off to the right side as Stapley gets over to the right for, I believe, Cutler. He feeds up top for Wesley. Now to Martell, left circle across to Stapley, glanced off his stick. Stapley gets it back along the near wall. Stapley throws to the near goal line for Fitz, who wraps it around the wall on the far side. Martell near the boards, danced around. He gets up top for Wesley. Wesley over to Steepley, right side. Who throws it behind his back for Wesley. Back to Martell. One timer saved by Jones. Rebound shot. Saved and it's blocked by Brinkman. Cutler to the right side. As he'll for- fire it across to Martell. He centers to Fitz. Fitz gets challenged by Brinkman, who's a big defenseman. As they battle along the end wall. Good defensive play by Ben Brinkman as Iowa clears it out. Grizzlies will make a line change. So do the Heartlanders. A little, a little less than halfway through the power play. As 11 minutes left in the first. Riz will get to neutralize with the puck. Raby across the center ice. Now he enters the zone with speed. Raby centers over to Thomas. Shot blocked by, make that Burke. And Jones makes a save. Left side, Mayhew over the point. Gets to Raby. who tried to feed it. Actually, Raby gets it. Drops it off for Mayhew. Mayhew right back to Raby left side. As Raby at the far goal line. Now he skates back towards the point. Here late in the power play. Across to Fairbrother, right side. Fairbrother will wrap it around the wall. Grizzlies get up behind the net as Utah gets pushed along the wall. I think that's Cole Gallant. Now another Grizzly gets tripped up. No call by the referee as late in the power play as Utah gets hit in the corner. Two on two scrum, make it three on three in the corner. As Burke battles, Iowa comes out with a puck as Grizzlies. There's a turnover. Left circle, lefty shot and a score. Grizzlies get on the board as we had an extreme wide shot. Let's see who got it. And it looks like it's Kyle Mayhew getting his third of the year. I think it's a five-on-five goal as Mayhew was to the left side, skated towards a circle, and fired it across Peyton Jones. Kyle Mayhew with the goal celebration afterwards, twirling his stick around as I believe it's a five-on-five goal as the Grizzlies get on the board first. Kyle Mayhew looks like he's bound for an outstanding year. Uh, he gets his third of the year. We'll see who gets the assist a little bit later on the ECHL app. 10 is left in the first period. Utah leads 1-0. The Grizz about shot Iowa 6-3. Draws at center ice. I believe it was a five-on-five goal as Iowa wins the faceoff. Heartlander skate from right to left as they dump it in. As chasing after it is Yoon, number four. As Yoon behind Utah's net gets held up. Texera takes the puck. As he'll move it ahead as Messner skates towards the far boards and he'll clear it out to center. Yakura chases after it. Yakura battles along the wall with Penner and a couple of Heartlanders. Iowa comes out with a pile with the puck. As I think it was unassisted by Mayhew. We'll see later on. As Iowa, right side, righty shot is blocked. Now Heartlander skates towards the crease. Miner cuts it off. Good defensive work by the Grizzlies as well. As Utah moves it out to center ice. As Grizz wrap it around the wall. And Entering the ice and chasing after its Martells. It's deep in the Heartlanders zone. Hard to tell jersey numbers with the wide angle they got going on right now. 920 left in the first left wing pass. Iowa enters. They'll skate towards the right side. Righty shot. Saved by Miner. Might have gone wide, actually. As the Heartlanders, Odin Tufto will throw it towards the far wing boards. Now, Iowa, Kevin McKernan with a righty shot that goes wide. As Iowa fires into the corner. Wesley chasing as Iowa behind the net. Odin Tuftoes, 5'7", but he's got a lot of speed. He'll get to McKernan, the Iowa captain, as he'll bounce it off the end wall. Action behind Utah's net as the Heartlanders. Right side, throw it over to the point as Ben Brinkman, who's been good tonight, will fire it to the left corner. Grizzlies get it off the boards as Mayhew, the goal scorer, gets it to Jared Power as he battles in the left point. As Grizz, get it, Power, trying to exit the zone, and he'll throw out the center ice. Good job by Jared Power winning the battle along the boards. Grizzlies enter from the left side. They get to Stapley. Stapley skates towards the left circle. Poke check by McKernan. Thomas gets it in the left point. Gets it to Stapley in the left circle. He gets knocked down by Brinkman. Brinkman looks like he's one of Idaho's best or Iowa's best defensemen. As power in the corner. Stapley with two Heartlanders. Iowa comes out of the pile with the puck as they skate around Peyton Jones's net. As the Heartlanders spread the ice skating from right to left. Iowa will tap it off the far wing boards. It goes towards center ice. And into the Grizzlies zone where Fairbrother has it. He was just reassigned to the Grizzlies yesterday from Colorado. As the Heartlanders, right, right wing, righty shot is blocked. As it goes back over to the left side. Will, will Calverly will feed it to the corner that he just vacated. Puck rolls along the wall. Nathan Burke delivers a hit on an Iowa skater. Burke gets it, the former Bowling Green product. As he'll fire it across. Grizzlies behind the net with it. 
as Utah moves out to center ice. An unidentified player gets it. Now, steeply, left point, Grizzlies enter the zone. As they get it to the corner, Burke battles. Glanch skates over there to join the play, but Iowa comes out with the puck as they skate around Jones's net. Iowa gets to center ice. Liam Coughlin moves left wing pass. Calverly bobbles it in the left circle of the U of Utah zone. As Stapley will chip it out to go on. It goes to neutral ice as Cameron Nault battles. And now it goes to the Heartlanders. They skate in right side, dropping off. Iowa looks to center it. Puck glides towards Miner slowly, and he'll move it to Keone Tech Shara. Now Penner, diagonal pass to Fitz. Fitz gets the puck left side. He stops near the boards. Looks to center it to Penner, and the, shot, the pass goes wide. Grizzlies in the attack zone as they skate towards their right. Lefty shot. Saved by Jones. As Peyton Jones holds on, 6.57 left in the first. Utah leads 1-0 on Kyle Mayhew's third of the year that we believe was scored 5-on-5. Five five. Maybe late in the power play, we didn't get to see the uh, score bug. I believe the Iowa player was out of the penalty box by the time Mayhew scored, and it was a 5-on-5 five five goal that was scored 9-51 into the first period. We're back in 30 seconds after this word from Rio Tinto. This isn't just copper. It's our job. It's food on our family's tables. Without it, we couldn't stay in touch. It's what keeps our homes warm and our lights on. It's the power behind the team and a greener, brighter future. This isn't just copper. It's a proud Utah and a strong America. Kyle Mayhew gave the Grizzlies a 1-0 lead as he scored 951 into the contest. It's listed as unassisted. I think Iowa turned it over there. Um, the penalty, Cameron Nault got a tripping minor, 7-16 in, and, and Mayhew obviously scored 5-on-5, five 951 five, in. Utah's taken seven shots to Iowa's four, according to the uh, box score, even though the score buck has three shots for Iowa, as I'm watching on Flow Sports. Martell has two shots for Utah, and then one shot each for Fairbrother, Yoon, Mayhew, Steepley, and Messner uh, for Iowa, Brinkman, Orzek, Calverly, and... Chaikovich have the Iowa shots. 6.57 left in the first. Draws in the Grizzlies attack zone, Iowa zone, which is on the right side of the ice. We see it as Penner, Fitz, and Messner out there for Utah as Iowa wins the draw as Hunter Lelly gets pushed in the back. He played at Bowling Green last year, also Minnesota Duluth. As near side, Iowa, Iowa tried to clear it out. Penner, right point, centers it, and it's picked off by Iowa. Heartlanders have big defensemen as they throw it to the right side. Hartlander towards the right side. Shot saved by Jones. As Iowa back to the left side, they roll it along the wall. As behind Miner's net, Iowa chips to the far side. Hartlander's right wing, righty shot is blocked. Now over behind Utah's net, Grizzlies try to clear it out. Grizz have control of the puck. Diagonal pass. Wesley chases after it. Iowa pokes it away at the Iowa blue line. As the Hartlander's outlet pass to center ice is picked off by Utah. Boy, the angle's a little bit too wide there to see who's who. Thomas ahead to Raby, who skates across center ice. Raby enters and dumps it in and chases after it. He collides with Kevin McKernan in the corner. Raby over to the left side as he danced around. He gets to Cutler. Brandon Cutler, seven points this season, skates towards his right. He's in the high slot. As Cutler backhands it into the right corner, Grizzlies get pushed. Cutler skates towards the corner as Raby's in the area. Cutler gets the puck. He'll skate towards his left. As Cutler now in the left circle, lefty shot and goes wide. Cutler played with Jones two years ago with the Grizz. As Raby battles with Iowa, the Heartlanders across center ice. As Cameron Nault dumps it in and he'll chase after it. Fairbrother, number three, gets pushed by Nault as the Heartlanders feed it to somebody off the screen. High slot, lefty shot goes wide as it ricochets off the backboards. Grizzlies chase after it in the near side, and they lift it out. I think that was Keone Texera, and he went over the head of an Iowa defenseman as icing is on Utah as the whistle blows with five minutes and 15 seconds left in the first period. A lot of mustaches there for the month of November. Kevin McKernan, the Iowa captain, sporting a mustache. He's made the rounds in the league. McKernan, a dependable defenseman. As action in the Grizzlies zone, 5.15 left in the first. Utah with seven shots, Iowa with five. Field trip day over in Iowa. Not sure where the kids are located. I think they're in the Grizzlies zone I, uh, over there on the left side of the ice. Iowa wins the draw, righty shot, saved by Jones. Peyton holds on, and unfortunately, we couldn't spot the name of the, the name and number of the shooter that took the shot. Uh, 5.12 left in the first. We're back after this word from America First Credit Union. 
Since 1939, America First has helped people start businesses, buy homes and cars, and achieve their financial goals. Today, our top priority is still the financial success of you and your family, which is why we're giving new members $100 when they sign up for a basic savings and checking account and another $100 when they upgrade to premium checking and enroll in and use direct deposit. So head to AmericaFirst.com today and join the credit union that always puts its members first. Five minutes, 12 seconds left in the first period. Utah has taken seven shots, Iowa six. Utah leads 1-0 as Kyle Mayhew scored his third of the year, 9:51 into the contest. Um, you know, the Grizzlies' next homestand will be on Thanksgiving week. That's next week, a three-game set against the New Finland Growlers, who are one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference. Remember, the next Grizzlies home game will be a Bud Light College night with $10 tickets. And make sure to call the operators, I believe, are sitting by as we speak in the Grizzlies office. Can't normally say that for a night game, but call them up. Make them busy. You know, call up Cam Levy or maybe uh, maybe call up Beck. You know, is Sophia Cunningham, she's probably over there as well. Speaking of which, we need to get a pickup basketball team started. And you know what? Sophia's husband would be a good candidate. I think he's about 6 feet and 11 inches tall. Um, you also call Patrick in the Grizzlies office, uh, Blaze. Blaze actually brought his own chair. Off the draw, left wing, righty shot is wide as there's about five minutes left in the first. Behind Utah's net, two-on-two battle as Brian Yoon holds his ground. Now the puck goes to Utah, skating from left to right as we see it on Flow Sports. Grizz cross center, steeply over to Gallant. Gallant will fire it around the boards. Iowa cuts it off behind their net with former Grizzly Peyton Jones in there as Burke Pushes, two-on-two two battle in the corner. Puck goes from the far corner to the near side as Glant chases over there. He's challenged by a Heartlander as Iowa's numbers are pretty tough to spot in the wide angle. Stapley feeds it across. It goes wide. Thank goodness the Grizzlies are on the white numbers with black, uh, white jerseys, black numbers, professional green trim. As Burke rolls it along the wall behind Iowa's net. As Gallant steeply gets tripped up, he's on two knees. Heartlanders get the puck. Grizz have had one power play. Idaho, Iowa's yet to take one. Heartlanders will throw it all the way into the Grizzlies zone, and icing is called. Great job by Keone Teixeira cutting off the Iowa skater to make sure the icing was called with 415 left in the first. That defensive pairing certainly looked good over the last three or four games. Keone Teixeira and Brian Yoon, who's got an assist in three straight games. That's his first three professional points as he scored in all three of the games against Wichita. Dania Kura will take the draw. He's got Jared Power to his left and Brandon Cutler to his right. The number one star last Friday as the Grizzlies overcame a 4-1 deficit to win 5-4 to as Cutler had the game tying and game winning goals. Draw in the right circle, won by Liam Coughlin and Iowa as the Heartlanders throw it out to center ice. We'd be in good shape if it stayed at this camera angle the entire game. As Wesley dumps into the right corner, Iowa moves it ahead. As the Heartlanders, and just as I say that, they go back to the wide shot. Heartlanders cross center ice and dump it in. Wesley behind the Grizzlies net gets it. As Utah skates from left to right, less than four minutes left in the first. Both teams have taken seven shots. As Wesley throws to the far side, Grizzlies get to neutralize. Utah crosses center, and they try to get it to Yakura. Cutler falls down in the left circle, no cause. I think he fell on his own. As Mayhew, the goal scorer today, skates towards the left circle. Mayhew at the far goal line, tried to try to chip it in front of power. Too many bodies. Mayhew now on the right side, gets it from Yakura. As Mayhew dances around, Iowa pokes it to the point. As Mayhew gets it back, he'll throw it to the left point. Grizzlies feed it to the corner at the end of their shift. Power skates over there, but overskates it and goes back to Iowa. As the Heartlanders skate towards center ice. As Davis Kosh moves it in, as Miner raises his arm, no icing, far goal line, Penner backhands it towards the point, and it goes to center ice. Grizzlies chase after it in the Heartlanders zone, as Iowa gets it out to center ice again, as Utah left side re-enters, as Grizz dump it to the far corner, Utah one-on-one battles, they drift it towards Fairbrother in the right point, as Fairbrother throws it back towards the end wall, two-on-two battle, actually three-on-two with three Heartlanders over there with two Grizzlies, Fitz gets it to Penner. Penner on the right side, wraps it around the wall. Corey Thomas on the left side gets it. He collides with a Heartlander near the boards. As the Grizzlies scrum, in the, scrum along the far side. Three Grizzlies, three Heartlanders over there. As Penner's in a battle, Corey Thomas with a few Heartlanders. Iowa gets the puck. As they'll move it out to center ice, Grizzlies get it back. As Mayhew back in the Grizzlies zone, right wing pass to Fitz near the Grizzlies bench. He'll get to center ice and dump it in as Iowa throws it back to center ice for Fitz vacated as he exits the ice. 
Hartlander throws it to the right side. Fairbrother pushes a Hartlander in the back as Iowa rolls it along towards the end wall. Iowa skates back to the right side as they feed it out in front. Utah intercepts the centering pass as they move it out to center ice. Grizz skate to new trice. Iowa makes a line change. Penner right side lifts into the left corner as it ricochets off the left corner with the affiliate logo as Iowa is affiliated with the Minnesota Wild. As the Heartlanders cross center ice with speed. As Campoli, left wing, lefty shot. And saved by Miner as he crowd the body save. As it looked like the shot might have gone wide, but he's able to make the stop with 139 left in the first. The shot was taken by Nick Campoli, who's got two goals and two assists in nine games. Campoli wearing number 89. Last season in 12 games with Iowa, he had one goal and two assists. 139 left in the first. Looks like the Heartlanders have taken about the last four or five shots as they've now taken a 9-7 to seven shot lead, but the Grizzlies lead the game 1-0. As a draw won by Utah's Texera around Miner's net, feeds a far wing pass, as goes to Raby. As Raby loses it, Iowa dumps it in. Miner behind his net cuts it off, third-year pro, who played at Vancouver in the WHL. As Grizz, Brian Yoon throws it back to Texera off the far wall. Texera moves it to center ice, looking for Raby. It gets poked. Iowa dumps it back in. Heartlanders look for a centering pass that goes wide as Cutler delivered a push on an Iowa skater. And, oh, they're going to call a penalty there on that push as Iowa was cutting towards the net and Cutler nudged the Heartlander in the back. And it looks like it's going to be a penalty on Brandon Cutler as he goes to the box. Cutler pleads his case, but uh, looks like he's going to serve two minutes. One minute, eight seconds left in the first, and Iowa gets their first power play of the morning. Heartlanders 11.8% on the power play. Grizzlies penalty kill 83.3%. The Grizz were 7 for 8 on the penalty kill last week against Wichita. Draws in the far circle. As Let's see what it was. It was Cameron Nault cutting towards the net. You know what? I'm not sure about that call. <laughs> yeah, the call was made, but um, um, Iowa might have caught a break. As the Heartlanders win the draw right side as Cutler did nudge him in the back, but had nothing to do with the play. Iowa, over on the right side, has the puck, as the numbers are pretty tough to spot. As Landon Kozier, high slot, throws it back to the right side. Kozier's now on the right point, as the puck is along the far goal line. Now Kozier gets it back. He feeds it across. As Iowa takes a righty shot, and it's blocked out in front. Hartlanders with a second shot. Miner makes the save. 36 seconds left in the first, as Trent Miner's looked sharp here so far. As looks like... Um, Odin Tufto was in the area. The initial shot was taken to the left side. Then they tried to slide it, slide it across. It looked like, um, you know, it looked like Iowa Davis Davis Kosh was over to the left side, tried to center it to Tufto, and Miner was able to make the save as Tufto didn't get much on that that shot from the centering pass. 36 seconds left. Louis Boudon is going to take the draw against Cole Gallant. As Utah leads 1-0 on. Kyle Mayhew's goal, 9.51 into the contest. First of a three-game set, as both teams will be off tomorrow, as a draw one by Iowa. Left side, as Landon Kozier's over there. He feeds it, a bouncing puck to the right side. Hartlanders, late in the first period, trying to tie it up. Iowa, just outside the right circle, feeds to the far goal line. As the Hartlanders get it back over to the right side, they get it across, as they swung and missed as Chaikovich. As behind Utah's net, two-on-two two battle as Thomas over there along with Fairbrother as a couple Heartlanders hack away. Burke over there joins the play, pushes a Heartlander in the back as Iowa to the right circle, centers it, righty shot goes wide, and that will do it for 20 minutes over at Extreme Arena as well, it looked like the Heartlanders, Max Trankovic and company looking to tie it up. He was over there with Landon Kozier. It looked like he was quarterbacking the power play on the Right side as he moved from the left point to the right. Durflinger out there as well. Uh, but the Grizzlies did a good job on the penalty kill. Remember, Utah will be shorthanded the first 52 seconds of the second period. The shot count looks like a football score. Iowa 10 shots to the Grizzlies 7. I think Iowa took the last 5 or 6 shots of the first period. Utah leads 1-0 as Kyle Mayhew scored unassisted halfway through the first period. We'll come back and recap the first 20 minutes of play, and we'll also go over some scores from around the world of sports. Obviously, there's one there's one other game in the league in progress, believe it or not. We'll go over that score and some of the other games that are going to be going on later today. 
as this is the earliest the Grizzlies have had a road opener in team history. Obviously, it's a morning game, and you only know, talk about that pregame dinner. Well, we're going to have a postgame lunch, and hopefully Carl's Jr. will come through with us, and it'll be interesting to see what happens for the Grizzlies here in the next 40 minutes. The score after one period, it's Utah Grizzlies one and the Iowa Heartlanders nothing. We're back in two minutes on the Grizzlies Radio Network. Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or ice. Enjoy a fresh cup today. This isn't just copper. It's our job. It's food on our family's tables. Without it, we couldn't stay in touch. It's what keeps our homes warm and our lights on. It's the power behind the team and a greener, brighter future. This isn't just copper. It's a proud Utah and a strong America. Since 1939, America First has helped people start businesses, buy homes and cars, and achieve their financial goals. Today, our top priority is still the financial success of you and your family, which is why we're giving new members $100 when they sign up for a basic savings and checking account and another $100 when they upgrade to premium checking and enroll in and use direct deposit. So head to AmericaFirst.com today and join the credit union that always puts its members first. to the Grizzlies. Welcome back to Grizzlies hockey as we're hanging out. And I think there's a bit of an echo in the room I'm in right now as we're near the team store and the Grizzlies lead one nothing. Hey, you know, if there's one thing I've learned here in the first period is that watching hockey in person is a lot better than trying to watch it on a video screen. So make sure you get your tickets for next week as Grizzlies take on the Eastern Conference powerhouse Newfoundland Growlers. They're going to be in town Thanksgiving week. Don't forget the next Grizzlies home game will be a Bud Light College night with $10 tickets. And Black Friday, the Grizzlies are actually going actually to wear specialty jerseys for warm-ups on Black Friday. And that, that should be a sharp look. And then, obviously, Saturday night's going to be a big one as well. Uh, get your tickets as operators are sitting by as we speak in the Grizzlies office. Give them a call, 801-988-8000. That's 801-988-8000. There are so many people uh, that are ready to take your calls that's tough to really uh, mention everybody you know i mentioned beck and sophia we mentioned the fact that we need to get a pickup basketball team started because sophia's husband is six feet 11 inches tall he could certainly uh, be an anchor for our, our basketball team to you know go along with all the all us other short people in the office don't don't forget to get connor burke a call you know give connor a call obviously he's a native of canada and he's the one that supplied the poppies for everybody that everybody wore uh, last weekend uh, here at Maverick Center in the series against Wichita, and also call, give Tegan a call. You know, maybe you're, maybe you could talk to to Cam. You know, he could talk to Cam, who actually won his cornhole matchup um, a couple days ago. Uh, you know, he plays a little bit of cornhole. Patrick McCarthy who was an intern with the Norfolk Admirals the last couple of years, uh, working with their broadcast unit. You know, he's taking your calls as well. And the interesting thing about Blaze, who's in there as well, as Blaze actually brought his own chair. He's actually got a special chair that he brought, and so he's got the best chair in the office. Give Blaze a call as well as they're ready to take your calls and get your tickets for next week against the Newfoundland Growlers. And I think the December is going to be a lot of fun as well. Don't forget that Saturday, December 9th, is going to be the annual teddy bear toss. We had our best showing of teddy bears last season, over 2,020 te and 200 teddy bears. I don't know the exact number, but it was over 2,000. That was the best mark the Grizzlies had ever had in the teddy bear toss, and we want to do better this year. That's why we're mentioning it, even though the game is still a few weeks away. We want to make sure that everybody brings their teddy bears to throw on the ice after, after Utah's first goal. Obviously, every Grizzlies game, we're looking for the optimum first goal of the game score, and today it was Kyle Mayhew. As it looked like Iowa turned the puck over just after their power play ended, 
Uh, May Hughes scored unassisted 951 into the first as he scored from the left side against former Grizzly goaltender Peyton Jones. Um, at that point, I think the Grizzlies had a shot count of about, I'd say, seven to three, maybe seven to four. Um, Utah really didn't take many shots there in the second half of the first period, if any. Uh, as Iowa did a good job with puck possession, it was a pretty tough period to describe as it, the action was just in the neutral zone. It seemed like the entire period. And so I think both teams are just in that filling out process. Um, and we talked about the good goaltending matchup. Obviously, Trent Miner was solid in the first frame, stopping all 11 shots he saw. Uh, Peyton Jones stopped six of seven in the first period. Cameron Nault got a tripping minor, 7-16 in, and that gave the Grizzlies a power play. Um, Utah was able to get a couple shots off on that power play, but didn't score. Unfortunately, we didn't have the um, time on the power play, so it was tough to tell um, you know, when Iowa came out of the penalty box. But uh, I think about 30 seconds after their power play ended, the puck was still in the Iowa zone, and they turned it over, and that's where uh, Mayhew skated to the left circle to put it away to give Utah a one nothing lead. Um, in terms of shots, you know, Grizzlies seven in the first period. Martell had two, and then five other Grizzlies with one. Unfortunately, going into the last segment of play, I mentioned the same fact. Um, so the Grizzlies really didn't take a shot that for that last at least five minutes of the first period, but they still lead one nothing. Fairbrother, Yoon, uh, Mayhew with the goal, obviously. Brett Stapley and Mick Messner had the other shots. Uh, they had one shot each, and, Mar and Martell obviously with two. For Iowa, 11 shots in the first frame. Chaikovic and Campoli each had two shots, and then seven other Heartlander skaters with one shot each. Uh, unfortunately, the Heartlanders numbers, it's a black jersey. The numbers uh, are kind of gray. Um, on the wide angle, we've been seeing for most of the period, it's almost impossible to tell who's who with Iowa's side. So uh, we apologize that we're not as specific uh, about who's who with the Heartlanders, who obviously have a pretty good set of forwards, and it looks like they've got good team speed. It looks like it's going to be a really fun series uh, between the Grizzlies and Heartlanders. Don't forget that both teams will be off tomorrow, and the series will reset on Friday night. That will be game two of the three-game series. I think the three games of the series each have different start times. Um, Friday night's game is going to be at 535 in the Mountain Time Zone, 635 local start in Iowa. Uh, we'll have coverage at six twenty at five twenty Mountain Time here on the Grizzlies Hockey Network, and then Saturday's game originally was going to be a five oh five start, and because the Iowa Hawkeyes played a you know they play a football game Saturday afternoon, they moved the Heartlanders game back an hour uh, to a six oh five Mountain start, seven oh five locally over in Iowa, and it's certainly good that it was just. Moving it back an hour, the other alternative probably could be moving Saturday's game to Thursday. So luckily, the game will still be played on Saturday, but it'll just be pushed an hour back because the Iowa Hawkeyes have a football game against uh, Illinois. That would be a fun one to go to. You know, if you're if you're thinking about making the trip out to Iowa, you know, get some tickets and maybe if you can get a football ticket, you can make a double header of it. Go watch the Iowa Hawkeyes take on Illinois. I know to most people that's just two random football teams but certainly be a fun environment, Big Ten football in November, and then go to the Grizzlies game that Saturday night, make a vacation out of it against the Iowa Heartlanders, the last of a three-game series. One other game involved in the league or going on right now, um, obviously, if you're watching on Flow Sports, you can obviously check out a, a little bit of the Wheeling-Toledo game. That's in the second intermission. Wheeling leads Toledo 5-3. to three. Looks like Wheeling's off to a good start this season. I remember, Wheeling will be at Maverick Center for a three-game series February 16th and 17th. That's a Friday and Saturday, as well as Monday, February 19th, for a 3-10 start. So that's when the Wheeling Nailers are going to be in town not a lot of familiar names on their roster. Doesn't look like there's any former Grizzlies that are in the Wheeling lineup. Uh, Grizzlies did face goaltender David Tendek, who's not starting this morning, but Tendek uh, used to play with Rapid City. Um, looks like second intermission. Wheeling leads Toledo five to three. Uh, Toledo has outshot Wheeling twenty-one to eighteen. But as we mentioned, uh, Wheeling uh, is a pretty good unit this year. They're two for three on the power play, and that's the difference in the game. Uh, Toledo doesn't have a power play goal, but Wheeling has two, and it's a two-goal margin. Wheeling five and Toledo three. That game played at Huntington Center over in Toledo, and if you're on Flow Sports, obviously can turn to see a little bit of that game as well. And obviously with Flow Sports, you can watch every game in the league. Later on tonight, three games in action. 
Um, at 5 o'clock, South Carolina is taking on Jacksonville. Florida is at Orlando. And Allen at Idaho in a Mountain Division showdown. Allen is 3-7 and seven to start the season. Remember, remember, Allen got off to a slow start last year before picking it up. Uh, Idaho is 8-2. and two. The Stillheads actually played Wheeling in a three-game series last weekend. I think the Stillheads, if I remember right, won two of the three games. So that's the five games in the league tonight. Um, let's see if there are any NHL action going on. I know that Wednesday is usually a TNT either doubleheader or a single game. Let's see which NHL games are on tonight. Looks like TNT's got a doubleheader that I'll be able to see. At 5.30, Philadelphia is at Carolina. Flyers 7-7-1 seven, seven, and one this year. Carolina is 9-6. and six. At 6.30, the Kraken are at the Edmonton Oilers and their new head coach, Chris Knobloch, as he replaced uh, Woodcroft, who got fired. Um, let's see if Edmonton ends up bouncing back. Now, it looks like uh, they're off to at least a pretty good start in the Knobloch era. 6.30 start for that one. Seattle at Edmonton at 7 o'clock. Anaheim is at Colorado. Obviously, Colorado, the NHL affiliate of the Grizzlies. Uh, Colorado is 9-5 and five this year. Ducks off to a good start there, 9-6. and six. And the second half of that TNT doubleheader with Philadelphia and Carolina being the first game, the second game is the Islanders at the Vancouver Canucks. Looks like Rick Tockett's done a good job with that team as they are 11-3-1 and one this year. Uh, so Rick Tockett, he used to work for TNT there between coaching stints. He did a good job with Arizona a few years ago, and it looks like he's doing an outstanding job with Vancouver, who's off to a fast start this year. Islanders off to a slow start there, 5-6-3 and three on the season. They're showing some highlights of the first period over on Flow Sports. That was probably the best save Miner made. As it was kind of an awkward-looking play as Durflinger was cutting towards the net. Delayed penalty. Fairbrother centered it over towards an unidentified player. Uh, that pass didn't connect. And then Cutler had a really good look. I'm not sure. He had a rebound there, I think, late in that power play. Not sure how he scored on. Messner had a good look from the left side that Jones made a save on. As Peyton Jones, a former Grizzly netminder, he didn't see a whole lot of work there in the last six minutes of the first period. Durflinger had a shot there from the left side that Miner made the save. As we're watching on Flow Sports, the highlights. Uh, Nick Campoli had a good look from the left side that Miner made the save on. Uh, Miner was a little bit more busy than uh, Jones in the first period, but obviously Utah leads 1-0. There was a close call there on the centering pass that looked like Odin Tufto just couldn't quite handle. If he would have been able to handle it, it could have been a tie game. But as it stands, Utah leads 1-0. As it's field trip day, a lot of kids in attendance having a good time. As there's a kid in the LeBron James jersey and some others in sunglasses. And uh, boy, when I was in fifth and sixth grade, I never got to go to a hockey game as a field trip. How about that? Instead of going to school, you get to go to a hockey game. How about that? Obviously, every kid, they're up and they're excited to see themselves on the video board over at Extreme Arena. And why not? You know, where, where would you rather be? Would you rather be at a pro hockey game or would you rather be sitting in school uh, learning uh, weird mathematical formulas. I think that the option of being over there at Extreme Arena is a good one, and that's why all the fans are celebrating and seeing themselves on the video board. It looks like everybody's having a good time over at Extreme Arena. And through one period of this three-game series, you know Utah leads one nothing, and that's kind of one of the interesting things, um, you know, about the Grizzlies here so far this season. Obviously, it's the first first road game this year. But the Grizzlies' best period offensively has been the third, where they've scored nine goals in the first periods. Uh, coming into play tonight, both teams had five goals. The Grizzlies had five and the opposition five. And so Utah now with a six to five edge uh, on the scoring in the first period. Um, in the second periods, it's kind of been a mixed bag. Um, you know, the Grizzlies have scored eight goals in the second periods this season, and the opposition has scored nine. Uh, really, where the Grizzlies have made their hay has been in the third period, where they've outscored the opponents. Nine to seven. Utah with a record of four and three. They've got a two game winning streak and they're trying to extend it to three games here this morning. Iowa's got a record of three, four and two. Uh, but Iowa certainly has looked good with Peyton Jones, who won the league goaltender of the week last week, where he ended up winning three games. When we come back, we'll have second period action over at Extreme Arena as I'm hanging out here in this uh, unnamed office. We need to come up with a name for this thing. Um, the Cube? I don't know. I really like the background here, though, is if you're watching on YouTube, the background's kind of cool. We are able to find a couple lights, luckily, so we weren't in the dark, uh, even though it seems like part of the action we're in the dark here, unfortunately. Um, you know, we need to come up with a name for this thing. 
I don't know. Maybe the Rio Tinto office. We got to call it a studio, though. We can't call it an office. I'm not sure. We'll see you in the next two periods. We can come up with a name for this thing. As Utah leads one nothing, we'll have second period action when we come back in two minutes. This is the Utah Grizzlies Radio Network. This isn't just copper. It's our job. It's food on our family's tables. Without it, we couldn't stay in touch. It's what keeps our homes warm and our lights on. It's the power behind the team and a greener, brighter. Since 1939, America First has helped people start businesses, buy homes and cars, and achieve their financial goals. Today, our top priority is still the financial success of you and your family, which is why we're giving new members $100 when they sign up for a basic savings and checking account and another $100 when they upgrade to premium checking and enroll in and use direct deposit. So head to AmericaFirst.com today and join the credit union that always puts its members first. Back to Grizzlies hockey. Utah leads 1-0. Remember, the Grizz is going to be shorthanded the first 52 seconds of this second period as Brandon Cutler got an interference minor. 18-52 into the first as Peyton Jones stretching before the start of the second period. Jones, a former Grizzly netminder, won 25 games for Utah over a two-year stretch. Um, he had bounce where he was outstanding for Utah and others that weren't so great. It's his fourth season as a pro out of Penn State. He's a native of Langhorn, Pennsylvania. Get a 3.16 goals against average in his first three years as a pro. As it's going to be an interesting test here for the Grizzlies here in the next 20 minutes. You know, we talked about the shot count. Utah coming into play tonight had 66 shots in their last four periods. The Grizzlies started out strong in the shot count, but didn't take a shot in the last seven or eight minutes of the first period. Can they find a way to establish something offensively and get a little bit of second period insurance? As Trent Miner has been outstanding so far, stopping all 11 he has seen as Utah leads 1-0. Grizz is going to be skating from right to left as we see it on Flow Sports. Your mind's eye see it on YouTube. Iowa's going to be skating from left to right, and on this wide shot, it's tough to spot the numbers. Chaikovich is going to be in the right wing. Looks like Tufto is taking the draw for Iowa against Tyler Penner. Kyle Mayhew's out there as well for Utah. Penner will take the draw. Penner wins the faceoff cleanly, but the linesman says, my bad. Almost like he won, almost like he won the faceoff too cleanly. So we'll do it again at center ice. Grizz and the numbers there are a little bit easier to spot on this wide angle. Josh Wesley, the Grizzlies captain's out, out there as well on the penalty kill. And so is Dean Yakura. Yakura is on the far wing. He's battling with number 17, Davis Kosh. Grizzlies win the draw as Wesley will sell it towards Peyton Jones's net. Jones cuts it off behind Iowa's net. Hartlander skeet from left to right as Iowa gets to neutralize. Yakura in the area as Yakura challenging as Iowa gets to neutralize near side. Now they move it ahead. Hartlander skeet towards the right circle. Righty shot saved by Jones. As the puck ends up on the left side, Iowa in the attack zone. Hartlander slided across. Great job by Yakura getting a stick in the way. As the puck ends up in the Iowa zone, Yakura exits. Great shift by Yakura. As he redirected a, a pass, as Iowa re-enters, as the Heartlanders left point try to get it across. Utah challenges it, bounces off a of Grizz and goes out to center ice. Iowa resets right side. They feed it towards a high slot. Now they ricochet off the near boards. Action now in the Grizzlies zone as Kyle Mayhew right side. He's the only goal scorer of the night as he's challenged by Davis Kosh. As he'll throw it to the far side, does Mayhew. Grizzlies out to neutralize. We're back to five-on-five five skating. Successful penalty kill by the Grizzlies as Iowa feeds it to center ice. Taken away is Burke. As make that Cutler as Cutler dumps it in. As it goes to McKernan. He's in the far side. 
They'll move it out to center ice. Bouncing puck. Iowa gets it. Grizzlies back defensively, so Iowa just dumps it into the far corner. Grizz gather it as Raby near side will bounce it off a Heartlander. Now Raby gets it back to center ice over to Fairbrother, who skates in. Fairbrother, left side, centers it to Raby. Shot saved by Jones. Raby gets it back. Raby scored a goal against Peyton Jones in college when Raby was at Michigan and Jones at Penn State. Iowa gets to the Utah blue line and dumps in far side. As Heartlanders make a line change, 140 into the second. Iowa one shot here in the period. Grizzlies yet to take one. As Utah crosses center ice, two on three. Utah dumps it in as Wesley comes off for a change. Landon Kozier gets it, number 44, as he'll sell it to center ice. And it goes past everybody. Miner lets it go towards Brian Yoon. No icing as Yoon moves it ahead. Grizz out to center ice, bouncing puck. Utah chases after it. Iowa gets it in their own zone. As the Heartlanders feed it off the far wing boards, Grizzlies at the right point challenge to try to keep it in. Yoon throws it to the corner. Iowa skates around Jones's net as the Heartlanders try to outlet it. Stapley picked it off. Stapley trying to feed the middle. Bouncing puck as Power chases after it. Near side, Power sails it along the walls. It's picked off by Hunter Lelig, number five. He'll feed it to center ice as Iowa dumps it in. As Dina Kerr after it. As Miners sails along the near side. As puck ends up at center ice, as it wobbles on its side, Iowa gets it at their blue line. As the Heartlanders, left wing pass, connects, and they'll dump it in. Miner and net, as Utah chases after it, as Keone Tech Shara skated around Miner's net, as Grizz, two-on-two battle, Messner battles. He's got an assist in two straight games. He'll throw it to center ice, where it's taken back by Iowa. Heartlanders on one knee, throw it to center ice near the bench area. As Tech Shara, Penner over there as well, as Messner comes out of the pile with a puck over to Fitz left side. Fitz along the boards. As Fitz danced around in the corner. Fitz backhands it in as it goes wide as he was looking for Penner in front of the crease. As Iowa enters the zone, left side. They feed it across the right. And centering pass in front goes wide as they're looking for Kosh out in front on a pass from Boudon. Grizzlies three on three. They skeet down the middle. Backhand shot. And saved by Jones as Messner throws it up top as Grizz chase after it. Looks like the Tulsa Oilers camera operators have found a new side gig working for the Iowa Heartlanders. Congratulations to them. As Josh Wesley behind his net, Grizz yet to take a shot here in the second period. As goes over to Mayhew, who moves it ahead. Grizzly slide to center ice deeply. Right wing pass off of Burke's skate. He dumps in deep as Burke collides with number four, Bren, Ben Brinkman, who's been active, the Notre Dame product. As over to the left side, Corey Thomas rolls into the corner. Grizzlies get pushed in the back as two-on-two battle along the near boards. Gallant's in the area. He delivers a push as coming out of the pile is Iowa's Brinkman. As Brinkman moves it ahead, Iowa still in their own zone. We'll tap it to center ice, and they'll dump it in. They chase after it as Fairbrother collides along the wall with the Heartlander. Iowa feeds it out in front, but the pass goes wide. Right point, Iowa around the wall. As they're in the corner, they throw it back to the left side. Fairbrother shadowing as Iowa feeds to the point, goes back over to the corner. Fairbrother gets it. He's at center ice. He slides it to his left. Nobody there as it ricochets off the near boards. No icing. As Kozier gets it, he skates around Iowa's net. Rink wide pass. As it looked like it didn't connect, but no icing as somebody got a piece of it. Grizz from right to left as Utah's still in their own zone. Grizz over to Fairbrother. Left side. Gets to center ice, dumps it in as it bounced off an Iowa stick. As the Heartlanders carry it out to center ice. And that's Kozier, I believe. Kozier dumps it in from the right, right wing as Yoon chases after it. He gets it from Miner behind the net. Now to Texera, who skates towards a far corner. Texera will carry it out of the zone as he gets to center ice. Texera crosses center. Left wing pass to Raby. Raby drops it off for Cutler. Cutler fires towards the net. It goes wide as he was looking for Martel to redirect it. Right point, Yoon throws to the corner. Raby over to Martel behind the net. Martel skates towards the right side. Sires the cutler. He couldn't reach it. As picking it off is Jake Derflinger, number 16. As Derflinger flings it out to center ice. Iowa three on two. As the Heartlanders left side. Fire it to the far goal line. They skate in. Backhand shot saved by Miner. Martel gets the puck near side. As Martel in his own zone drops it off. Grizz spread the ice as they carry it across center. As Iowa makes a line change, Grizzlies enter the zone from the right side. They dump it to the corner. Iowa chases after it, fits in the area as Iowa avoids a check of fits. As the Heartlanders right wing cross center ice, Iowa skates in as the Heartlanders skate towards the near goal line. Back in, a shot and a score as Nick Campoli roofed it over the right shoulder of Trent Miner, and he's tied it up at one. 
Campoli gets his third goal of the season as he just skated along the right side and ended up in the circle and just went top shelf over the right shoulder of Trent Minor. So Heartlanders have outshot the Grizzlies 4 to nothing in the second period, have tied it up. As Campoli got around Tyler Penner, and there wasn't much Minor could do about that as Campoli had a good look and didn't miss. 13.59 left in the second. It's the Grizzlies one and the Heartlanders one. Fans going crazy over at Extreme Arena, I believe. As action continues, now it's deep in the Heartlanders zone. Heaven knows who won the faceoff there as Iowa battles along the near side. It's in the Heartlanders zone. Puck lifts high into the air towards the left circle. Fitz gets it. He's got an A on his sweater, as does Tyler Penner for Grizzlies road games this year. And this is the first road game for Utah as Iowa will carry it out of the zone. They'll get to center ice with good speed. Iowa veers off to the left. They enter the zone as they'll drop it off for Jocks. As Jesse Jocks out to the far goal line, feeds it across to Campoli, the goal scorer, who gets it up top. Right point, McKernan slides it across to Brinkman. Brinkman fires it off the end wall as Jocks behind the net. Veers off into the corner near side. As Jocks now to the right side, battles with Mayhew. Jocks throws it to somebody off the screen. Iowa in the slot over to Penner. Penner will bounce it off to Messner. Messner lifts, uh, extends his stick to try to carry it out of the zone, and he does as they dump it in. Minor far goal line gets to Josh Wesley. Utah hasn't taken a shot in probably about 12 minutes of game time. They're stuck on seven. Wesley over to Mayhew near side. As Mayhew diagonal pass to center connects. Grizzlies get it as Martell along the far boards. He's in the right point. He'll skate towards his left. Martell drops it off for Thomas. He'll take a lefty shot. Glove saved by Jones. First shot by the Grizzlies here in the second period. Jones makes a stop with 12.37 left in the second. Timeout on the ice will take one as well as Nick Camp as uh, Nick Campoli tied it up as he went top shelf over Trent Miner 601 into the second period. We're tied at one on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. This isn't just copper. It's our job. It's food on our family's tables. Without it, we couldn't stay in touch. It's what keeps our homes warm. And our lights on. It's the power behind the team. And a greener, brighter future. This isn't just copper. It's a proud Utah and a strong America. Since 1939, America First has helped people start businesses, buy homes and cars, and achieve their financial goals. Today, our top priority is still the financial success of you and your family, which is why we're giving new members $100 when they sign up for a basic savings and checking account, and another $100 when they upgrade to premium checking and enroll in and use direct deposit. So head to AmericaFirst.com today and join the credit union that always puts its members first. We're tied at one, 12 37 left in the second. Nick Campoli scored 601 into the frame. Looks like Maxime Chaikovic picked up an assist on that goal as Chaikovic a plus one here so far. Um, Iowa, four shots to the Grizz. They didn't give a shot to Thomas there. It looks like to start the, they're right there before the break. So Utah's stuck on seven. Grizz win the draw. They're in the offensive zone. Iowa in the black jerseys with numbers that are really tough to spot. As Iowa gets now to center ice, battle at the right point. Now the Heartlanders have it. They're back in their own end. As they're moving out to center ice, it ricochets off the far boards. Grizzlies, Martell couldn't handle it. Goes back to Iowa as a right wing pass to center ice. Thomas challenges as Iowa throws it in, but picked, picking it off in the slot is Johnny Fairbrother. As he'll move it ahead towards Martell, Iowa picks it off. Good poke check by the Grizzlies. Thomas and Fairbrother, the defensive pairing. As it goes back towards Fairbrother, who skates towards the far circle. Fairbrother in front of Trent Minor, veers off to the near side. As Fairbrother starts the attack as he skates to neutralize. Now he crosses center. He'll throw it to the slot as Grizzlies will ricochet off the near wall. As it goes back to, to uh, Iowa. Uh, somebody's got it. They'll throw it to the left side. Pass connects. Iowa skates towards the left circle. Lefty shot. And looks like the shot went wide as the Grizzlies get it to center ice. As dumping it in is Nathan Burke, the Bowling Green product, who started his college career at Minnesota. Burke feeds it towards the middle for Cole Gallant. Righty shot, saved by Jones. As Burke, back in the near side, chips it to the point. As taking its tech share, I'll take a lefty shot and it goes wide. As Utah officially yet to take one here in the second period, according to the scoreboard. As far corner of the Iowa zone, two-on-two -two battle. Burke over there 
and Stapley as Burke has the puck as he's being shadowed by Tufto. As Burke skates along the far goal line, lefty shot hits the side of the net, and Stapley behind the net. Gallant joins the play two on one. Now it's two on two as Gallant gets pushed by Kozier, and Kozier comes out with a puck as Iowa will carry it out to center ice. Three on three. Hartlander's left side enter the zone onside as Hartlander skate in. Shot saved by Miner. That was taken by Chankovic as Wesley, far side. Gets hit by a Hartlander. Somebody off the screen has a puck at Stapley. He skates down the middle. He enters the zone, but he stops skating as I believe the Grizzlies are called offside with 10.31 left in the second. Same teams on Friday night. Looks like both teams will be off tomorrow. Remember, the Grizzlies' next home stand will be a three-game set against the New Finland Growlers. Next home game for the Grizz will be the day before Thanksgiving. Operators are standing by, or they're probably sitting by, over at the Maverick Center office waiting to take your calls for tickets. As uh, I, That's going to be next Wednesday, Grizzlies and Growlers. Iowa skates in, left wing, shot is blocked as action in the Grizzlies zone. Iowa's outshot Utah 5-1 to one here in the second period. Left side shot saved by Miner. Rebound goes out to the near corner as Iowa... Kevin McKernan fires it from the right point to the left corner. It's Iowa in the attack zone, skating from left to right. As Grizzlies get it, as they'll move it ahead, as extending the stick is Raby. He couldn't gather it. It goes to center ice. Cutler chases after it, but it goes to Ben Brinkman, the first-year pro out of Notre Dame. Right wing pass, Iowa enters. They feed it to the corner, picked off by Utah. Raby backhand pass connects as Cutler. Make that Martell. Skates down the middle. Now he veers off to the right, fires a righty shot. Saved by Jones. He holds on with 9.45 left in the second. As he moved over to Martell, he glided over to his right, had a pretty good look, but Jones made the save. 9.45 left in the second period. We're back in 30 seconds after this word from Affinity 56. Tied at one, 9.45 left in the second period, so we're halfway through the scheduled 60 minutes. Kyle Mayhew scored unassisted, 9.51 into the first. They gave Utah a 1-0 lead. Here in the second period, Nick Campoli scored 6.01 in for Iowa. That tied up the game. Chaikovic and Kevin McKernan picked up the assist. Iowa has outshot Utah 5-2 in the second period. The Heartlanders have a 16-9 edge here so far. Uh, Jordan Martell leads the Grizzlies with three shots. For Iowa, it's been a mixed bag. Nick Campoli, three shots, including the goal in the second period. Uh, Will Calverly and Chaikovic, as well as Landon Kozier, each have two shots for the Heartlanders. Former Grizzly net minder Trent, uh, uh, Peyton Jones has stopped eight of nine, uh, while the Grizzlies' Trent Miner has stopped 15 of 16. Draw on the Iowa zone, right side, as the Grizzlies win the draw. They'll throw it to the right side as Messner chips it in. As over to the right side, Grizz, skate towards the circle, lefty shot. And it's blocked out in front of Jones. Arm is raised by the referee, and it's going to be a penalty on Iowa. As Grizz feed it out in front, Messner with a shot, and it's blocked away. Fairbrother throws it towards Messner. Campoli touches up as we get a whistle. Holdings the call as the Heartlanders go into the penalty box. Grizzlies for the second time tonight. Tonight being, obviously, this morning. Utah will be on the power play. Let's see who's going to the box for Iowa. Uh, 9.24 left in the second as the Grizz are going to be looking to find a way to take a lead. And it's going to be number nine, Nolan Orzek, who's going to the box. Orzek, a defenseman, 5'11", 175 pounds, scoreless in six games this season. Orzek will take a seat for two minutes. Grizzlies are hoping it's less than that because that means they will have taken a 2-1 lead. Grizzlies 0-1 on the power play. Cutler wins the faceoff. Wesley over to Martell just outside the left circle. Back up top for Wesley over to Martell. Martell feeds it to the near goal line for Fitz. Fitz with a shot saved by Jones. Action in the crease as Puck glides towards the far corner. Now it goes to Martell. Back to Cutler. Left side. Shot goes wide as Fitz was trying to redirect it. Puck glides along the far wing boards and all the way towards Trent Minor as... Less than nine minutes left in the second period. Wesley behind Utah's net turnover, but Wesley gets it back as he was challenged. Stapley feeds it to new tries to the rooster. Martell crosses center ahead to Cutler. Cutler enters, but Iowa pokes it back to center. Martell from the left side will throw it back into Grizzlies territory 
Uh, somebody off the screen has it, and it's deep in Utah's zone. It's Josh Wesley, the Grizzlies' captain. Near wing pass to Cutler, ahead to Martell. He crosses center ice. Martell enters. He gets double teamed. He gets hit. Grizzlies skeet towards the right circle. Centering pass. Shot. And a score! Grizzlies get on the board as Dylan Fitz connected on a one-timer from the slot as he gets a pass, Peyton Jones, and Utah is taking a 2-1 lead. Stapley to Fitz on a one-timer to the back of the net. So the main assist is going to go to Brett Stapley, who fired a centering pass to Dylan Fitz, and Fitz went top shelf over his former teammate as Utah gets a power play goal to take a 2-1 lead. Well, that was big time. You talk about Dylan Fitz, who's been red hot. He scored two goals on Saturday and was the number one star. And Fitz gets Utah's second goal here this evening. So Fitz with the goal. We know Stapley's going to pick up his third assist in a Utah uniform in this Stapley's third game. Fitz had 17 goals last year, and it looks like he's really gotten it going for Utah. Two goals on Saturday and one here so far. Off the draw. Now we get a fight as Iowa's attacking the Grizzlies. They drag down Dakota Raby. Here on Kids Day, we got a fight as Raby gets dragged down by a Heartlander near the Utah blue line. And that was right out, out of a faceoff. Boy, was it soon enough after a faceoff where the Iowa player gets tossed? That's Chaikovich, who's lost his cool. Is it soon enough after a faceoff to where an ejection could be warranted? As Chaikovich uh, dragged down Raby, uh, probably enough time had passed as Chaikovich is just going to go to the penalty box. And they probably won't even call it a fight, just call it roughing, as Raby's going to the box for Utah as well. So 8.22 into the second, Raby having some words for Chaikovich as Raby with a bit of a smile and a chuckle as Raby and Chaikovich uh, each pushed each other. Then nobody, I think, dropped the gloves, but Chaikovich dragged down Raby on Kids Day over in Iowa. So let's see if anything comes of it. Now, the new rule, obviously, um, you can't fight right after a face-off. Um, I don't think they call it a, I don't think that would be considered a fight uh, based on just the optics of it. And I'm not entirely sure that they would, uh, you know, it'd probably just be a roughing of anything else. Neither guy dropped the gloves. They just got physical over near the Utah blue line. Chaikovich waves his right arm at Raby, just trying to wave him off. Um, Chaikovich, a native of Russia. And, you know, actually it's Slovakia. Don't want to get that confused. Slovakia is where Chaikovich is from. He played for Orlando last year. Raby, the native of California, as he works on his stick with 822 left in the second. It's 2-1 Grizzlies as Dylan Fitz scored a power play goal with Brett Steepley getting an assist. That was 11:32 into the second period. Utah 1 for 2 on the power play. Iowa 0 for 1. Draw is going to be at center ice. I think we're going to skate. Well, let's see. Count the number of bodies. Looks like we'll skate four on four, maybe for two minutes. As Texera will enter. He's out there along with Fair Brothers. So we're skating four on four. Utah leads two to one. Nathan Burke will take the draw for the Grizz against Odell Tufto. As a, or o Odin Tufto. As it goes to Iowa, as they skate from left to right, Grizzlies skate from right to left. As Iowa with the puck, they're going to be patient with their approach on the four on four, as a lot of teams are. A tough toe, left wing pass, Iowa enters. They skate towards the corner. Iowa, deep in the Grizzlies zone, gets pushed two on two along the end wall as Texera cuts off a Heartlander. Fairbrother over there as well. Puck still in the corner as Fairbrother gets pushed. Burke surveys as Puck still in the corner. 7.50 and counting left in the second. Utah comes out of the pile with the puck. As Utah moves it ahead, Fairbrother, right wing pass. Grizzlies enter, and that's Burke. Burke dumps into the corner. Fairbrother glides over there. So does Kozier for Iowa. Puck goes to the near side. Grizzlies, as Burke gets it poked away, he skates towards the corner. As he gets physical with Kozier, as Burke now along the end wall, gets it poked away by number four, Ben Brinkman. The Notre Dame product has been active. Now Kozier gets it back, and he'll drop it off as the Heartlanders start the attack from Left to right, Odin Tufto, five feet seven, a fast guy, skates in from the right side. He stops along the boards of the points. As Tufto dances around, he's got seven assists this season, no goals. He drops it off, high slot, righty shot goes wide. Rebound goes to Iowa as McKernan feeds it up top. As Orzek skates towards the corner, Utah pokes it away. As we're skating four on four here as Cutler battles with Iowa in the neutral, neutral zone far side. As Martel takes the puck, uh, so he'll drop it off to Cutler. Right side, lefty shot goes wide, and it gets redirected out of play as we stop play with 6.49 left in the second. Utah leads 2-1. Not many shots by the Grizzlies so far, just 11, uh, with uh, four of them coming in the second period. Fits on the ice now with Stapley 
And that's the two that combined for Utah's goal. Stapley got the assist on Fitz's goal. Stapley was on the right side and centered it to Fitz. And that's why Utah leads 2-1. As Iowa wins the draw, now the Grizzlies wrap around shot saved by Jones. Iowa comes back the other way. Two on four. Hartlanders cross center. Ice were skating four on four. As Iowa hangs out the neutral zone, now they enter from the left side. Iowa skates towards the left circle. Backhand shot saved by Miner, and Trent holds on. Good job by the Grizzlies boxing out the Hartlanders and not letting them get a second chance. It looked like Miner bobbled it for a second. Shot was taken by Jesse Jocks as Jocks just kind of slid it towards Miner. The miner had, had a second to try to gather it. Then Jocks pushed Dylan Fitz after the whistle. Jocks argues his case, but looks like he'll skate to the bench. 6.29 left in the second, 2-1 Grizzlies. Draws in the far circle here in this morning game. One other game in action. Wheeling's taking on Toledo. That game should be close to reaching its final point at this point. As draws in the far circle, we'll give you a score update there as that game should be final by the second intermission here. We'll give you a score update during the intermission. As Yoon gets it after Utah wins the faceoff. As so far, it's a tech share. I believe we're still skating four on four. He moves it ahead. Raby, did he gather it? As Puck glides along the boards towards the far side as Iowa crosses center. Now they enter down the middle. Hartlanders are off to the right. They look for a centering pass. Utah picks it off and ships it off the near wing wall. Raby chases after Iowa, left wing as Iowa wraps it around the wall. Right point, Hartlanders behind the net. They try to center it out in front, and it's taken away by Teixeira as it bounced off the stick of uh, of Calverly and goes out of play as a fan of the near corner gets a souvenir. 5.53 left in the second. Utah leads 2-1. to one. We're back in one minute on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. This isn't just copper. It's our job. It's food on our family's tables. Without it, we couldn't stay in touch. It's what keeps our homes warm and our lights on. It's the power behind the team and a greener, brighter future. This isn't just copper. It's a proud Utah and a strong America. Since 1939, America First has helped people start businesses, buy homes and cars, and achieve their financial goals. Today, our top priority is still the financial success of you and your family, which is why we're giving new members $100 when they sign up for a basic savings and checking account, and another $100 when they upgrade to premium checking and enroll in and use direct deposit. So head to AmericaFirst.com today and join the credit union that always puts its members first. Five minutes, 53 seconds left in the second period. Grizzlies lead 2-1. to one. For some reason, they still called Dylan Fitz's goal unassisted, even though he clearly got a pass from Brett Stapley. 11-32 into the second. As Iowa's outshot Utah 17-11, to 11, uh, including a 6-4 to four edge in the second period. As Peyton Jones for Iowa so far has stopped 9-11. of 11. Trent Miner for Utah stops 16 of 17. As action continues, Grizzlies cross center ice. Now they skate in. Right circle, righty shot, saved by Jones. I think that was taken by Dylan Fitz with Jared Power net front trying to redirect it. It's the fifth shot taken by the Grizzlies here in the second period. Draw is going to be in the Iowa zone. Second intermission, we'll see if we can officially come up with a name for whatever room I'm calling this game from near the Grizzlies team store. And we'll also give you some scores from around the world of sports and have a little bit of fun talking hockey, as that's really what we're all about here. Draws going to be in the far circle. Penner will take it for the Grizz. He's the Iron Man, banking his 152nd career, a straight regular season game. Utah wins the draw. Thomas left side shot is blocked. Power fires towards the net, and it ricochets wide off the end wall. As Iowa back towards Kozier, he's deep into the Heartlander zone near corner, and he lifts it out to center ice, gathered by Power, and he dumps it in. Penner will come off the ice. Power chases after it as Iowa feeds it out to center ice. It ricochets off the far boards. It goes wide, and the arm is raised by the linesman as icing is on Iowa with 5.16 left in the second. Jack McQuiston and Riley Hickey are the linesmen this morning. Michael Zyla is the referee. Draw is going to be in the near circle. Cutler will take the draw. Martel to the left as Grizzlies win the faceoff. Mayhew over to the left side. 
Gets it to Cutler. Cutler in the left point. So drop it off to the high slot. Righty shot by Wesley goes wide. Amaya Jones might have gotten a piece of it. Mayhew gets pushed in the corner as Iowa comes up with the puck. Less than five minutes left in the second period. They skate down the middle. Righty shot and it goes wide. Miner might have gotten a piece of it as Wesley throws it to the near side for Raby. As they move it ahead, Marta Mayhew crosses center ice three on two. He'll get it to the right side. Pass goes wide as towards the end wall, Iowa gets it. They skate from left to right. So Hartlanders throw it to center ice. Jax enters the zone, steeply challenges him. As Iowa throws to the corner, Brian Yoon gets it. Yoon gets pushed by Tufto. As Raby to the near side, as he'll move it to center ice. Raby, right wing pass connects. Nathan Burke uh, overskates the puck. Iowa gets it. Two on four. Hartlanders to the right side, dump it in. Miner behind his net plays. It'll throw it to the far side as Grizz get it out to center as it lifts over Stapley. Stapley gets it. He drops it off as it goes back to Stapley, who backhands it in, but not, not all the way. As four minutes left in the second period, Grizzlies lead two to one. As over at the Utah Blue Line, Grizzlies backhand it towards center ice for Stapley. It goes past him. Iowa dumps it back in. Miner behind his net gets to the near side for Texera. As over to center ice, Iowa wraps it around the wall. Miner tried to cut it off. He lets it go towards the near wing. As Iowa behind the net battles with you. As Texera joins the play, Galan over there as well. Three on two behind Utah's net. Iowa comes out of the pile with a puck as they feed it towards the left side. Iowa lefty shot ricochets off the end boards and hits the side of the net. As Iowa to the right. It's the Heartlanders. Skeet towards the right point. They feed it towards the high slot. Lefty shot is blocked out in front of Miner. Might have been blocked by a Heartlander. As Davis Kosh, right side just outside the circle. He'll throw it to the left point. As the Heartlanders slowly, methodically still in the offensive zone with the attack because we're skating five on five. As they get it over to Kosh. Puck was near the blue line. Iowa kept it in. Kosh looks to center. It goes to the right circle back to the near side for Kosh at the goal line. Kosh feeds it to the high slot. Nobody's there. As Iowa chases after it deep in their own zone. As where's Peyton Jones? Well, it looks like a delayed penalty. As Jones is out of his net. As Iowa crosses center ice, Heartlanders will be on the power play soon. Right side, they'll throw it to the high slot. Can't even see the referee's arm being raised. As Iowa looks to center and it bounced off a couple skates, Iowa keeps it. As Kosh left side feeds it up top. As the Heartlanders get to the right side, one timer and save by jo- by Miner. As rebound goes to the near side, Thomas touches up. As looks like the Grizzlies are going to be shorthanded as Iowa was on a delayed penalty for quite a while. Believe it or not, we never saw the referee's arm raised. The only way we knew is uh, Jones was mysteriously not in there. Brian Yoon goes to the penalty box, and he broke a hockey rule. He'll be in for two minutes. 225 left in the second. Looks like Yoon's wearing one of those net guards, and it seems like um, you know, as things progress, I think we'll see more and more players wearing the net guard. Kind of tough to tell because the collar for the Grizzlies kind of has something that looks similar to black uh, near it. And the net guard really isn't all that huge. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a, something that we'll see in hockey uh, permanently going forward. Tough to take the draw for I- I- Iowa against Tyler Penner. Iowa wins the faceoff. They'll throw it to the right side. As This may be one of the worst days of my life. As it goes to the right point and bounces off the boards. As Tufto throws to the near goal line. Utah leads 2-1. to one. That would certainly make things better. Tufto along the near wall. He's at the right circle surveying. As Tufto feeds up top to the right point. Iowa gets it back to Tufto. As he's in the corner, he gets pushed by Thomas. As Iowa towards the near side, feeds it up top. Now left side. Iowa centers it, and a shot is blocked. Grizzlies clear it out. Good defensive work by Utah. It's pretty, you know, they've been pretty good on the penalty kill as of late. As Kozier, quarterbacking this power play, gets to neutralize and drops it off. As Iowa crosses center ice, now they enter the zone. Left side, they throw up between the legs of Tough Toe. Now they feed it to the left side, back to Tough Toe. Siren pass out in front, goes wide. As Iowa, left side, they try to center it. It bounced off a of Grizzly, and it goes to the left point. Iowa's in the offensive zone. Left side, as they feed it back to the left circle. As they'll take a lefty shot, and they score. As David, that's Davis Kosh as he ties up the game. He gets his third of the year as he celebrates, and he'll skeet to the bench. It's a power play goal for Iowa, and they've tied it up late in the second period. Kosh was just to the left circle. Boy, on that wide angle, it's tough to see how he beat Miner, but he got it past the goal line. 
And we'll get a closer look here as Kosh was to the left circle. There's a lot of bodies out in front. And Kosh, in slow motion, fires it, and it goes past Miner, top shelf. There was a Heartlander that was actually leaping in front of Miner to try to redirect it, and as possible, Miner didn't have good vision on it. 123 left in the second. We're tied at two. Is it's anybody's game here late in the second period? Iowa wins the draw as we're back to five on five skating. Both teams have a power play goal tonight, or this this whatever we call this this morning. As Campoli throws to the left point, now across. McKernan beats the high slot as Iowa gets it back to McKernan. He'll fire towards the net, saved by Miner. As it goes over towards Hume, Texera trying to locate it. One minute left in the second period. Goes back to Brian Hume. As he'll throw it to the far side, Martel gets it. Martel in the far corner, deep in the Grizzly zone. Throws it back to the near side. Texera skates to the corner as he collides with a Heartlander. Texera, one-on-one battle. Yoon surveying as Texera, the strong one, maybe one of the strongest guys in the team, as it goes to the point. Grizzlies get it. They get to neutralize. Raby has the puck. Left circle. Looks to center it out in front, and pass goes wide. As he was looking for, I think, Martel. As Iowa gets the puck. Half a minute left in the second period. As the Heartlanders. Davis Kosh enters the zone. Looks to center it. Lefty shot. And it goes wide as he tried to go low on minor. Now right side, Iowa. Looks to center it. Martel falls down. No cause. He fell on his own. Cutler, rink wide pass the right side to Fairbrother. Fairbrother, right circle. Drops it off. Steeply skates over there. Eight seconds left in the period. Deep in the Iowa zone. As the Grizz throw up from one corner to the other. Near side, Iowa lifts it. Goes to the left point. Fairbrother throws it towards Texera. And that will do it for 40 minutes of play over at Extreme Arena. As uh, Iowa outscored Utah 2-1 to one in the... Second period, Grizz had a 2-1 lead as Dylan Fitz scored on the power play, but Davis Kosh gets a power play goal of his own with Liam Coughlin getting an assist. Time of that goal, 18-37. And as we're tied at two, not many shots here tonight. Iowa, 18 shots to the Grizzlies, 12. When we come back in two minutes, we'll talk some hockey and recap the first two periods of play. We're tied at two on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. When you pay with the Nitro Card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro Card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today. This isn't just copper. It's our job. It's food on our family's tables. Without it, we couldn't stay in touch. It's what keeps our homes warm and our lights on. It's the power behind the team and a greener, brighter future. This isn't just copper. It's a proud Utah and a strong America. Since 1939, America First has helped people start businesses, buy homes and cars, and achieve their financial goals. Today, our top priority is still the financial success of you and your family, which is why we're giving new members $100 when they sign up for a basic savings and checking account and another $100 when they upgrade to premium checking and enroll in and use direct deposit. So head to AmericaFirst.com today and join the credit union that always puts its members first. Second intermission over at Extreme Arena. Grizzlies and Heartlanders tied at two. Congratulations to Tony Parks. He's the new Bees broadcaster. He'll replace Steve Klauke for the 2024 season. Certainly Tony deserves it. Grizzlies led 1-0 after one period. Kyle Mayhew scored unassisted, 9.51 in. Iowa outshot Utah 11 to 7 in the first period, but the Grizz, but the Grizz took a one nothing lead. Iowa tied it up 601 into the second period. Nick Campoli uh, got his third of the year with Chaikovich and Kevin McKernan. McKernan, the Iowa captain, gained the assists. 
Utah got on the power play after Chaikovich got a roughing minor. Actually, it was Orzek who got the holding minor 10-34 or 10-36 into the second period, halfway through the power play. It was Dylan Fitz who scored his third of the year. He's got three goals in his last two games. Martel got the secondary assist. Brett Stapley was over to the right side, centered it to Fitz, and Fitz fired it past his former teammate as Fitz and uh, Jones were teammates towards the end of the 2021-22 season, and Fitz picked up his third of the year. It was a power play goal. Utah won for two on the power play through two periods. Um, Iowa got on a power play after Brian Yoon got a tripping minor, 17-35 in. And halfway through the Iowa power play, it was Davis Koch who was to the left side and scored. Um, there was a, a Heartlander, and you know we apologize. The jerseys that Iowa's wearing, the numbers are almost impossible to to um, to decipher um, unless we're watching a real close up. But somebody was leaping, and I think took away some of the vision of Trent Miner. And Davis Koch put it away for his third of the year. Liam Coughlin and Odell Tufto with the assist. Tufto hasn't scored a goal yet this year, but he now has eight assists on the campaign. Um, that tied it up at two, and that's where we stand right now. Boy, there were not many shots taken by either side in the second period. Seven for Iowa, four for Utah. Um, there were some shots there where it looked like they could have given Utah a shot, but it looks like they're pretty stingy there with what's defined as a shot. I guess you can define a shot on goal as anything that you know, would go in if the goaltender wasn't there. Um, so, you know, you'll see some places where they'll. And even though, if, you know, they make the save, you know, I think Miner had one or two of those occasions where, you know, the shot would have gone wide and ricocheted off the end wall. Uh, but the goaltender gathers it either along the far goal line or near goal line and makes the save. And, you know, a lot of places will count that as a shot, but it looks like Iowa is going to be, it, it looks like Iowa it's a little bit more stingy with that. Um, the Grizz probably went about 12 minutes worth of game time without taking a shot. And that was one of the things I think Ryan Knasiewicz and Christian Horn, the Grizzlies coaches, wanted is a few more shots on goal uh, through two periods. How about this? The other game that's in action right now, Toledo, with a two-goal comeback in the third period, two unanswered in the third, and they've tied it up at five. Looks like that game is going to overtime as we speak. You can watch the end of that game on Flow Sports. Uh, looks like Brandon Hawkins scored the game-tying goal with uh, 34 seconds left in regulation. As Hawkins has two goals for Toledo, who won the Western Conference two years ago. Jay Bednar is in net for Toledo. I don't think that's Jared Bednar, the Col Colorado Avalanche head coach. Uh, but uh, Bednar stopped 14 of 19. As, as Wheeling, uh, how about this for a stat? Wheeling only had one shot in the third period. Toledo had 12. Toledo, 33 shots to Wheeling's 19. Uh, they're headed to overtime. Wheeling and Toledo tied at five. Other action tonight in the league. At 5 o'clock, South Carolina will take on Jacksonville. Florida is at Orlando. And at 7-10 in the Mountain Time Zone, a Mountain Division showdown between Allen and Idaho. That game at Idaho Central Arena. Idaho's 8-2 on the year. Allen is 3-7. Um, both teams will have tomorrow off. I'm talking about the Grizzlies and Heartlanders, and they'll meet on Friday night. Remember, the start time for each of the three games in this series is going to be different. Uh, Friday's game is going to be at 535 in the Mountain Time Zone, 635 obviously over there in Iowa. Uh, coverage here will begin at 520. And then on Saturday night, uh, make a note that the game is, was originally scheduled for 505 in the Mountain Time Zone. Uh, because the Iowa Hawkeyes play a football game, and I'm not lying there, the I Iowa Hawkeyes play a football game, and because of that, the Heartlanders game will be moved back an hour and will start at 6.05 in the Mountain Time Zone. Um, operators are sitting by as we speak over the Maverick Center, although it is about 11 o'clock. Maybe they're on their 11 o'clock walk. I'm not sure. Uh, there's so many guys, there's so many people over there in the Grizzlies office right now, it's tough to really name them all without like going through half the intermission. But they're sitting by as we speak um, to take your calls for tickets for the upcoming homestand. And don't forget, we want to see a big crowd for the teddy bear toss on Saturday, December 9th. That's going to be the last of a three-game series against the Allen Americans. And if we've learned one thing about the first two periods of play, we've learned that uh, being in person is a lot better than trying to watch it on TV. And that's really the, the, the appeal of hockey. 
Uh, the appeal of it is the fact that in person, you get to see the five senses. You get to smell the game of hockey. And if you're near the ice, you know, make sure to bring a jacket. You can feel the chill of the ice. You know, there's nothing like watching a hockey game in person. I remember the first time I went to a Grizzlies game and instantly I was hooked. You know, there's just something about watching hockey in person um, that makes it worth coming every time. Uh, you know, it's just there's something about it. You know, there's really something about a lot of sports that's better in person. You know, basketball is about better in person than it is on TV. You know, baseball, you can see the fly to the ball and you can see just how fast the 95 mile an hour fastball is coming in. Um, I won't be seeing many baseball games in 2024, but I do know that, you know, when I went to Colorado this past July uh, to watch the Rockies take on the Oakland A's, I was able to see Peyton Jones, his brother Nolan Jones, put on a show. Um, you know, I was able to see the Yankees uh, earlier this year. There's just something about seeing the, they, you know, seeing them. They weren't wearing, wearing the pinstripes, obviously, since the Yankees were on the road. There's just something about uh, seeing baseball at the ballpark. You know, you go to a football game, it's certainly a different experience. Football might be one of those where watching on TV is just about as good as seeing it in person. After all, you see the fourth quarter of NFL games, and you see fans throwing punches at each other. <laughs> you, know, you see all those fights there that, you know, you see on social media. Football might be the one sport where it's okay to watch it on TV, and you probably get a good experience. All the other sports... It's worth coming to the arena and watching some Grizzlies hockey. So operators are sitting by. I'm not sure who you get. Do you get Cam Levy? You know, is Patrick McCarthy going to be your guy when you make the phone call? Are you going to call Blaze? Is Blaze going to be the one that picks up the phone? Is it going to be Connor Burt? Is Connor Burt the, the the native of Canada who knows a ton about hockey? We might even have Connor Burt on a few times to talk hockey with us as he knows the game inside and out. Uh, Tegan, you know, is Tegan going to be the one taking the phone call? No, not to be confused with Tegan Zahn, the former Grizzlies captain. Is it going to be uh, Beck? Is Beck Ritzel going to be the one to take the call? Or is it going to be Sophia Cunningham uh, taking the phone calls? Well, you know, it's, there's so many people to choose from. Make the call. And if you do make the call to the Grizzlies office, hey, we got a live chat on YouTube. Let us know who took your phone call. And that the number, I believe, is 801-988-8000. That's 801-988-8000. They make the call to the Grizzlies office as operators are sitting by as we speak. Now, we're trying to come up with a name for whatever area we're calling the game from here today. It's near the Grizzlies team store. I'm not sure. I do like the background, though. The background uh, behind me that you can see on YouTube is certainly an interesting one. Um, I, it was just there. I it just that When I came this morning, I thought, this is a nice background. Uh, we're trying to come up with a name for this place, you know, I think Guy Karenza's tuned in. Yeah, Guy, our good friend who's calling games for the Amarillo Wranglers, he's tuned in this morning, and I think he came up with one. Bear Cave is you know, the, the way to go. And that might be just be it. We're here in the bear cave, um, trying to watch hockey, you know, bear cave, grizz cave. I don't know. Do we go with bear cave or do we go with grizz cave? I think grizz cave kind of personalizes it a little bit. Now, either way, um, it's, you know, we'll come up with a name. I think by the end of it, I think grizz cave might end up being it. Um, as that's where we are. We're in the Grizz Cave here. I think there's a bit of an echo, though, in this room. Uh, either there, I'm just going nuts. Well, I'm going nuts whether I'm hearing an echo or not. Um, we're having some fun here. First of a three-game series. We knew it was important for the Grizzlies to take care of home ice, but uh, we have mentioned it a few times, but it's important to win on the road. You know, if you want to be a division champ and you look over every division just about every year in this league, it always seems like the teams in first and second place in, in the divisions are those teams that have the best road records. Um, you know, you talk about that adversity of face on the road. You know, sometimes you're not necessarily staying at a great hotel. Um, you know, there's a lot of things there. But the one thing about being on the road is you do get to focus a little bit more. You do get a little bit more in your routine and you can focus on hockey and not have to worry about some of the other stuff that you have to worry about when you're at home. Um, you know, but for the Grizzlies last year, you know, they went 16, 16 and four on the road. They were exactly 500 away from Maverick Center. Remember when Utah won the division two years ago, when Trent Miner and Peyton Jones were both in net for the Grizz, uh, they won 19 road games. That was certainly a big factor as to why the Grizzlies won the division 
You know, I think two years ago, Idaho, they were absolutely outstanding at home. They missed the playoffs because, if I remember right, they won 11 road games, and they had a tough time winning away from Idaho Central Arena. Well, obviously, things have turned around for the Stillheads, and a big part of that is they, they've been able to win on the road. Obviously, they've always been a good home team. And for you, Tom, if you figure you win about 20, let's say you win two-thirds of your games at home. You win, you go 24 and 12. They tell you not to do math on the air, but you know, let's say that's what the Grizzlies' record at home would be. Well, if you go 500 on the road, you got 42 or 43 wins. I don't know if that's good enough to win the division, especially with a good start that Kansas City's off to at eight and two. Um, you know, but uh, you're you're probably talking about that gets you maybe first or second place in the division. Uh, so because of that, it's important to take care of business on the road. You know, Iowa is one of those teams they've struggled in years past. This is their third year of existence, but they have won three in a row. And so obviously it looks like it's going to be an interesting test here this week against a goaltender that at least some of the Grizzlies are very familiar with in Peyton Jones. Uh, there are five players on the Grizzlies club right now who are teammates of Jones back in the 2021-22 season. Goaltender Trent Miner, who's on the Utah side, as well as four skaters, uh, Brandon Cutler, um, Dakota Raby, Dylan Fitz, who was acquired late in that season, and he certainly was instrumental in the playoffs. Uh, you know, I keep remembering that that game two against Rapid City, where Fitz scored two third period goals and really set the scene for Utah, scoring two goals in the final 50 seconds for that thrilling 5 4 victory, where Dastu scored the game winner with about seven seconds left. And Tyler Penner, obviously the Grizzlies' Iron Man who has appeared in every game since the start of the 2021-22 season. I think the streak is up to 152 in the regular season and 176 if you count the postseason. Uh, so Tyler Penner, you know, just – I had a feeling he was going to have a big game, and I do have a feeling he's going to have a big third period. The guy, though, that has come up big for the Grizzlies is Dylan Fitz, who scored a second-period power play goal. Uh, don't forget the Optum first goal of the game. Every game we pick the Optum first goal of the game as Optum is committed to making healthcare work better, leading the way to better experiences, better health, and lower costs for you. The Optum first goal of the game score was Kyle Mayhew, who scored 951 into the contest. Utah's 3-0 and when scoring first this season, and they scored first here, but it looks like a barn burner over in Iowa. As Remember, the third period has been the most successful for the Grizzlies offensively. And they're going to need a strong third period if they want to come away with two standings points here on a Wednesday morning to extend the winning streak to three. When we come back, we'll have third period action as Iowa and Utah are tied at two. And once again, congratulations to Tony Parks. He replaces Steve Klauke as the voice of the Salt Lake Beach for the 2024 season that was announced earlier today. This is the Grizzlies Hockey Network. This isn't just copper. It's our job. It's food on our family's tables. Without it, we couldn't stay in touch. It's what keeps our homes warm and our lights on. It's the power behind the team and a greener, brighter future. This isn't just copper. It's a proud Utah and a strong America. Since 1939, America First has helped people start businesses, buy homes and cars, and achieve their financial goals. Today, our top priority is still the financial success of you and your family, which is why we're giving new members $100 when they sign up for a basic savings and checking account and another $100 when they upgrade to premium checking and enroll in and use direct deposit. So head to AmericaFirst.com today and join the credit union that always puts its members first. about set to start the third period. Grizzlies and the Heartlanders tied at two. This broadcast is presented by Rio Tinto Kennecott, producing premier American copper and proudly celebrating 120 years of operations in the Utah community. Grizzlies hockey also brought to you by Mountain Land Supply Company. And at Mountain Land, they are committed to making their customers' business better, progressive change, creating a remarkable experience, and enriching our community. That's Mountain Land Supply Company at Rio Tinto, 
They are pioneers in mining and metals. They produce materials essential for human progress. Grizzlies Hockey also brought to you by Coca-Cola, where real magic is only a sip away. Well, both teams have a power play goal, and let's see if the Grizzlies can generate the type of shots they did in the third, in the, uh, third period uh, on Friday night, where they had 18 shots against Wichita. They've got 11 here so far through two periods, even though it seems like the um, stat keepers are a little bit more stingy as to um, what's constituted as a shot. Um, we, we have made a note that the Grizzlies have performed well in the third period over the last handful of games, and they're going to need that here to get a victory. Um, watch out for that forward line of Messner, Fitz, and Penner. It looks like they've got some things going. Um, you know, it's kind of tough to see who's who at times. Uh, looks like the Grizzlies will be skating from left to right. Cutler, Martell, and Raby in there as well as Martell, or as well as Mayhew and Wesley. That's the five that started the game for the Grizzlies. They're out there. Liam Coughlin takes the draw for Iowa, and he wins it as Durflinger throws into a defenseman. Left wing pass towards Calverly as it bounced off his stick. Grizzlies chase after it in the Heartlander zone. Raby at the left point as he battles one-on-one -on -one with Durflinger as the puck goes back to neutralize. Iowa, one-on-two, carries it to the left circle. As Calverly looks to center it, it goes back over towards Calverly as he trying to get from Durflinger. Right point, righty shot goes wide. 30 seconds into the third period as action in the Grizzly zone. Far corner, Raby will bounce it off the Heartlander, and that's the captain, Kevin McKernan, as Grizzlies lift it out to center. Martel will skate towards the bench. No icing as both teams make a line change. Stapley out there for Utah as Iowa skates towards neutral ice as Brinkman gets it taken away. Stapley skates towards the left circle. Stapley with the righty shot, saved by Jones. Rebound and a great defensive play by Tufto getting his stick in front of Burke, who was trying to get the second chance. As Iowa clears it out to center, Utah chases after it. And icing is going to be on the Heartlanders. 18.52 left in the third. Looks like the kids there for field trip day are behind Trent Minor over there on the left side of the ice. We see it on Flow Sports. As Nathan Burke out there, watch out for him. He's with Cole Gallant and Brett Stapley. Stapley in his third game with the Grizzlies. He's got an AHL contract with the Colorado Eagles. Gallant's had some good looks over the last few games. And Nathan Burke, a guy that uh, had a great college career putting the puck in the back of the net, both for the University of Minnesota in the last two years with Bowling Green. Burke looks like he's going to be a pretty good pro. He ended last season with Orlando and a handful of games with the um, with the uh, San Jose Barracuda. He actually had a decent amount of success over in the AHL at the end of last season. As the linesman says, my bad, we'll drop the puck over again. As it's over in the Iowa zone, we're trying not to make too much mention of the obvious storyline, and that's Peyton Jones going up against his former team. As Jones was with the Grizzlies for two years, and he hasn't seen a lot of action through two periods, but... He looks pretty sharp as he's one of those goalies that when he's when he's on, he's as good as anybody. Grizzlies win the draw. Gallant slides it to the right point for Fairbrother. Fairbrother skates towards his left. He's in the high slot. Lefty shot goes wide as it ricochets off the end boards. Gallant skates towards the corner with the puck as he'll feed it up top. As Thomas fires towards the net and the goat bounces wide as it hits off the end, end boards on one hop. Right wing, Burke with a shot, and it's blocked by an Iowa stick. As Thomas left side rolls it around behind Iowa's net. Burke skates towards the corner, far side, as he tried to get to Stapley. Stapley along the far boards gets held up. Action in the corner. Glant skates over there, two-on-two -two battle. Iowa comes out of the scrum with a puck, two-on-two. -two. Heartlanders cross center ice. They dump it in. Thomas collides with Chica, with um, uh, Calverly as puck ends up in the slot. Burke gathers it, and he'll backhand it out of the zone. As it stays in plays, it glides into the Heartlanders end. Iowa gets it. As they skate from right to left as Iowa, two minutes into the third period. Right wing, they chip it in. Yoon gets it off the end boards as he avoids a check as goes over to the corner. Davis Kosh, who's got a goal tonight, he scored late in the second period. As Puck ends up on the right side, righty shot. And deflects wide. There's about five bodies out in front of the net, and I think it bounced off of one of those bodies and flew out of play. 17.46 left in the third. We're tied at two as the draw is going to be in the Grizzly zone. Utah's yet to take a shot in the third period. Iowa's taken one. First of a three-game set. Next game will be on Friday evening. 5.20 pregame show, 5.35 face-off in the Mountain Time Zone, 6.35 locally in Iowa. Riz, when the draws, Texera gets to the Utah blue line, moves it ahead as it slides towards Jones. Jones feeds it towards the end boards. It's Fitz skates over there. Fitz and Messner along with Kozier. Kozier for Iowa pushes Messner. Messner keeps his feet. He slides to the high slot for Texera. I'll take a lefty shot. 
And a blocker saved by Jones. Left point, Penner in the area. As Fitz lets it go, as the puck slides along the wall to the near side. And Zagriz trying to get it back towards Yuna. Goes to the high slot for Teixeira. Who gets it to Yune. Yune gets it poked away. It goes to neutralize. Yune gets it back as he backs it out into the Utah blue line. Left wing pass to Teixeira, who dumps it around the wall. It goes to the right side as Iowa feeds it out to center ice. As the Heartlanders make a full line change, so do the Grizzlies. Utah skating from left to right three minutes into the third period. We're tied at two. Up ahead to Martell. He skates towards the right circle. Stops near the boards and falls down. As he goes to Iowa, who gets the center ice right wing. Heartlanders dump it in. Grizz chase after it. Raby in the area. He gets hit in the far corner. As looks like Thomas gets hit. And puck goes back over to Utah as he skates to the near side. Martell lifts it in the air as it bounces at neutral ice. Iowa to the far side. They dump it in. Wesley will get it in the far circle as he's now at the Utah goal line. He skates around Miner's net. He'll chip it to center ice, right wing. Martell, did he get a piece of it? No, says the linesman. Icing is on Utah as Wesley was looking for an outlet pass to Martell at center ice and it looked like the pass went wide. 16-23 left in the third as we're tied at two here in the morning game. Earliest road opener the Grizzlies have played. In fact, I think, the, I think this is the last morning game the Grizzlies have played since February of 2018 when they lost a close one to the Rapid City Rush. That's the last one I can recall. I think it's the first one that I've called. I think Adrian Denny was still here at that time. Left wing, shot saved by Miner. There was some traffic out in front as the puck goes back to neutral ice. As Iowa dumps it in, as Grizz chase after it, Mayhew at the near goal line, skates towards the corner. As he'll backhand it to center ice. As the Grizz, Raby back to Mayhew. Diagonal pass connects. Grizzly skate towards the left circle, towards their right. Righty shot is wide. Steeply in the corner gets double teamed as Iowa takes the puck. We're tied at two. Four minutes into the third period. Hartlanders ice it. Skating's Cole Gallant. The linesman raises his arm, and I think that's uh, Jack McQuiston, number 53. As draw's going to be over in the Hartlanders zone. Oh, boy, boy, McQuiston looks like a pretty good skater as he gets the puck. And he'll give it over towards Riley Hickey. Hickey sporting a good-looking mustache. 13 shots for the Grizzlies, 20 for Iowa. Stapley will take the draw. Stapley, second-year pro. He was a teammate of Kyle Mayhew for the champion Denver Pioneers back in 2022. They won the Frozen Four, and Stapley was a big part of that team as he scored a ton of goals for them. Iowa wins the draw. They throw it to the right point. Grizzlies keep it in. As Grizz dance around, Stapley fires towards the net, and it gets blocked in the near circle. As Utah, Cole Gallant fires towards the net. As Burke gets tripped up, no call. As Puck ends up in the far side, Grizz over to the far circle, but Iowa took it away. They'll tap it off the glass, chasing after it in the right circle. Two players go down, and a Grizzly player lost his stick. That was Burke that lost his stick. Calverly in the corner, challenged by three Grizzlies. And it goes back to center ice as Calverly's stick is laying in the high slot of the Grizzly zone. As neutral ice, we get a whistle. Let's see. Uh, Maybe all they called a trip. That might be why Calverly's stick ended up leaving him. So tripping's going to be the call. It looks like the Grizz are going to the box. It's Nathan Burke. Yeah, I think that's what happened. As Calverly lost his stick, and I believe that came from a trip on Nathan Burke. 15.07 left in the third as Iowa goes back to the power plays. Nathan Burke serves two minutes. It's Burke's fourth minor penalty of the year. 15.07 left in the third. Iowa's on the power play. Both teams are one for two on the man advantage. Draws in the far circle. As Grizz win it, Texera throws to the right point. Iowa keeps it in. Hartlanders, left circle, feed it across. It glanced off a Grizzly stick and flies to the far side. Now far goal line, Iowa slides into the high slot. Nobody was there as it goes all the way to Peyton Jones. As the Heartlanders skeet from right to left in the third period, it's anybody's game as we're tied at two. As Iowa crosses center ice, they'll drop it off. Heartlanders' numbers are pretty tough to spot. Heartlanders enter from the right side as a skeet towards the circle. Now they center it out in front. Coughlin with a shot and he scores as Liam Coughlin was all alone. And he fired away past Trent Miner as he gets his third of the year. As the Heartlanders have scored two power play goals to take a 3-2 lead. Boy, it looked like nobody accounted for Coughlin in the slot. And once the centering pass got through, it was wide open. And he just slid it past Trent Miner. As Coughlin looked like he went glove side on Miner. And once he scored the goal, got on, you know, just kind of extended the left knee and 
pumped his right fist in the air. As Coughlin, the former Worcester Railer, who had 10 goals last season for Worcester, uh, it looked like Fitz was trying to block it, and there just wasn't much they could do. As Once that pass connected, that was really all she wrote. And it was Coughlin and Miner one-on-one after that. So it's 3-2 Heartlanders, five and a half minutes into the third period. As Iowa enters the zone, they skate towards the right circle. Righty shot, saved by Miner. Boy, right off the draw, Iowa had a two-on-two and a good look from the right side as they're trying for some insurance, and the Grizzlies looking to try to tie it up. As right off the draw, let's see. As Calverly was skating down the middle, fed it to the right side, and, boy, these numbers are pretty tough to spot. I think that was Durflinger. Uh, maybe, it had been, maybe, maybe it was somebody else. Maybe it was tough to. I'm, I couldn't really tell, but Iowa had a good look from the right side. Draw one by the Grizzlies. Josh Wesley skates around Utah's net. He'll chip it off the near wing boards and goes to the Heartlander zone, slides towards Jones. He plays in the crease and throws it to the near side. It looks like the Grizzlies playing with some speed here to try to tie it up. As Steepley Burke and Galan are out in the ice as Iowa feeds it out to center. Puck lifted out of place. Delay of game. Let's see. Did it get redirected? Uh, I think it might have gotten redirected. The puck's going to stay at neutral ice. Grizzlies were wanting delay of game as the puck exited play. Stapley argues his case, but looks like we're going to continue to skate five on five. As Burke, Stapley, and Gallant are on the ice, Stapley will take the face off as the draw is going to be in the far circle of the Heartlanders zone. Crouching down to take the draw is Odin Tufto. Uh, Tufto, eight assists this season. He's still looking for his first goal. As Iowa wins the face off, they carry it to neutral ice. Grizzlies get it. As Josh Wesley, right wing, neutral ice, moves ahead to Gallant, bounced off of his stick and goes back to center ice. Mayhew gets it. Mayhew's got a goal tonight, three on the season. As he'll throw it to center ice, Stapley gets it right wing. He crosses center, and Stapley dumps it in. Behind the net, Jones will drop it off as Iowa spreads the ice. Six and a half minutes into the third period, Hartlanders lead 3-2. to two. Liam Coughlin, the deciding goal in a power play tally a few minutes ago. As the Hartlanders... Out to center ice, right wing. Pass connects. Iowa skates towards the right circle. Uh, they look to center it out in front. Fairbrother with a great defensive play, and Miner covers up. Great job by Johnny Fairbrother as Iowa, Iowa was attacking the net and centering passes. Miner argues with the referee, and Fairbrother did a good job cutting off the centering pass. As the right side, Fairbrother, well, it looked like the shot was taken, and then Miner argues that the Iowa skater got a little bit too close to Miner after the whistle. 13-22 left in the third. It's Iowa 3, Utah 2. We're back in 30 seconds after this word from Affinity 56. like everybody in attendance is having fun at Extreme Arena. Field trip day over in Iowa. Heartlanders lead 3-2. to two. Liam Coughlin got a power play goal a few minutes ago to take the lead. Let's see if they've got the assist down for that Coughlin goal. They gave the assist to Boudon and Tufto. Tufto with two assists. Coughlin now has one goal and one assist. Tufto, two assists for Iowa. Uh, Heartlanders, 22, 24 shots to Utah's 13. Iowa leads 3-2 to two as the Grizz win the faceoff and lift it out to center ice. Pitts, who's got a goal tonight, dumps it in as he chases after it. As he goes along with Justin Wells, number 14, Grizzly skate along the far goal line, try to center it. Iowa cuts it off. Heartlanders carry it across center ice. Heartlanders won three in a row. Grizz won two in a row. Heartlanders around the far goal line get tripped up. Did the call get made? No. As Grizzlies cross center. As three on three, Grizz enter as they dump it in from just outside the Iowa blue line and chase after it. Over to the far side as Iowa will lift it out to center ice. Grizzlies get it at their blue line. As Texera back in his own zone, wearing number 74, six-year pro. Five, four years with Iowa. I think he played against, the, or four years with India. I think he played against Iowa a couple times over the last few years. 
Grizzlies roll it around Iowa's net. It goes to the near corner. Hartlander's cleared out to center. Cutler at the Utah blue line gets it. So chip it ahead. Left wing pass as the rooster gathers it and dumps it in. Martel chases after it. Raby slides over there as well. As Raby gets it left circle, lefty shot goes wide as he was looking to tie it up. Iowa looking for some insurance. Brinkman, left wing pass to Calverly. Calverly, left circle, lefty shot. And a stick saved by Miner. Shot might have gone wide. Now left side, righty shot, Kozier. And Miner makes the save as the rebound goes to the near side. As Martel delivers a hit in the left point. As the Heartlander skeet towards the corner. Good hit by Raby as he hit Kozier and took the puck away from him. Over to the high slot, Iowa gets it back. Hartlanders towards the high slot. They beat it to the right side. Righty shot is blocked by Raby. Outstanding defensive shift by Dakota Raby as he blocks the shot and it goes out of play. That's one of the things about Dakota Raby. You think about his speed and just think that that's what he's all about. But Dakota Raby, a great defensive shift there as he gets a high five from Grizzlies assistant coach Christian Horn. Ryan Kanaswich back on the Grizzlies bench this week as he talks over with his unit. Like looking at the back of Horn and Kness, which is the first time I've seen those guys all day. <laughs> There's a show to white shot, wide shot of the Grizzlies bench. Grizzlies get it. And I think after Idaho initially won the faceoff, Riz skate from left to right. Glant crosses the center ice. He tried to get it to Burke, but Burke couldn't extend his stick far enough as Mayhew dumps it in as goes back to Iowa. Hartlanders from right to left. They're looking to extend their winning streak to four. They dump it in and it looks like uh, icing isn't called as Grizz deep in their own end. Riz outletted to center ice left wing. That pass goes wide. No icing, says the linesman. Deep in the Heartlander zone, nine minutes into the third period. Heartlanders glided along the far wing boards. Corey Thomas will skate after it, and he gets it. But icing is on Iowa as play stops with 11 minutes and one second left in the third period. Heartlanders have just about doubled up the Grizzlies in shots, 26 to Utah's 14. And after Utah took about seven shots there in the first half of the first period, They've only taken about seven shots here in the last two periods. Tyler Penner will take the draw for Utah. Let's see if the Grizzlies can find a way to tie it up. Um, Nick Campoli will take the draw for Iowa. Campoli scored a second period goal, which was Iowa's first of the evening or morning. As Utah wins the draw, fits right side, will bounce it off of Brinkman as the puck goes to the left side. As the Grizz, Corey Thomas, who's played a lot of minutes, feeds it towards the middle. Iowa pokes it back to the point. Grizz keep it in. Utah throws to the right side as the Grizz get thrown along the boards. As Fitz skeets over there, Messner was the one that gets thrown to the wall. As Fairbrother in the corner over with Fitz and a couple Heartlanders. As Brinkman took the puck away from Fitz, Fitz continues to battle. Fitz goes down. Penner in the area as Brinkman will tap it off the near wing wall. Fairbrother gathers it at center ice. Across to Thomas, who dumps it in. As Peyton Jones, the former Grizzly, will wrap it around the near wall. Jones wearing number 41 for Iowa as Grizz have it at their blue line. As Utah slides it across to Brian Yoon, Brune Yoon will get it towards Peyton Jones as it bounces off the side of the net as the pass towards Messner didn't connect as Iowa lifts it high into the air, bounces it in Grizzlies territory as it glides deep in Utah's zone to the far corner. Grizz move it ahead as Martel across to Cutler, right side. Cutler stops near the boards as he's in the right point. He'll roll it around as Coughlin, who's got the deciding goal of the game, moves it ahead as Iowa backhands it to center ice, bounced off the of Tech Shara, who gathers it and lifts it back in. As the Heartlanders will feed it to the far side, Iowa moves it to center ice as Grizz get it back. As looks like Utah tried to skate in, the arm is raised. And the Grizz are offside, 9.35 left in the third as the linesman spotted the play, sporting a mustache. Martell in the area as he shrugs his shoulders. Time out on the ice. We'll have a neutral zone draw when we come back. Iowa leads Utah 3-2 to two on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. Since 1939, America First has helped people start businesses, buy homes and cars, and achieve their financial goals. Today, our top priority is still the financial success of you and your family, which is why we're giving new members $100 when they sign up for a basic savings and checking account, and another $100 when they upgrade to premium checking and enroll in and use direct deposit. So head to AmericaFirst.com today and join the credit union that always puts its members first. When you pay with the Nitro card at Maverick, 
you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today. 9.35 left in the third period. Iowa 3, Utah 2. See if the Grizzlies can make a comeback here. Utah has been outstanding in the third period over the last couple of games. Um, Utah, 15 shots. Iowa's taken 25 according to the scoreboard. Um, the design goal right now, scored by Liam Coughlin, draws it neutralized. Iowa territory. Heartlanders win the draw. They'll throw it to the near side as Grizz have only taken eight shots over the last two periods. As Iowa back deeper in their own end, time's on their side. Riz trying to challenge to tie up the game with good speed as it goes to neutralize. It looks like the puck deflects out of play. 9.17 left in the third. If you joined us late, Kyle Mayhew gave Utah one nothing lead. 9.51 into the contest. Utah led one nothing after one. Um, Iowa scored two goals to the Grizzlies, one in the second period. Um, Nick Campoli tied it up at one for Iowa. Then Dylan Fitz gave Utah a 2-1 lead. He scored 11.32 into the second Iowa scored two power play goals later on. Davis Kosh, 18-37 into the second, and Liam Coughlin, 5-27 into the third with a power play goal. Iowa's two for three on the power play. Grizz, one for two. Announced attendance, 2,252 over in Iowa, 2-2-5-2. Grizz win the draw, left side, fits with a shot, and it deflects off a stick, and Jones makes a glove save. Well, it looked like that puck got redirected. Hopefully, we'll see a replay, and Jones was able to make a save about shoulder high. Uh, Jones wearing number 41. Here's a trivia question, and I'm not sure I can remember the answer. What was Jones' number as a member of the Grizzlies? Uh, go to the live chat on YouTube and see if, we, see if I can remember what it was. I think it was in the 30s, if I remember right. Uh, was it 39, 35? I'm not quite sure I remember. Maybe it was 31. As off the draw, puck slides towards Jones, who covers up in the crease. I should remember. He was there two years, but that, I guess that shows you... How bad my memory is. I can remember random football players from the 1990s, but hey, I guess it is what it is. Uh, draw is going to be in the far circle. Dean Yakura will take it against um, somebody for Iowa who's arguing the case, and that's Odin Tufto, who's probably arguing about what Yakura is doing in the faceoff circles. Both guys crouch down low, and the draw won by Iowa. About nine minutes left in the third. They lift it out to center ice. Josh Wesley in the area. Over with, fit, over with Fitz, Riz dump it in. Iowa chases after it, far corner, and they'll lift it over the head of Jared Power. Uh, maybe that was Fitz. As it goes to center ice, Yakura throws it back into the Grizzly zone for Josh Wesley. Over to Mayhew, who's got a goal tonight, three on the season. Mayhew gets to center ice, moves it ahead. Yakura chases after it. Iowa gets there first in the corner. Heartlanders lift it. Grizzlies want delay of game as it goes out of play. As the officials talk it over, is it going to be delay of game? As the two linesmen and now the referee joins. This is it a delay of game? It is. Grizzlies get a power play. 8.41 left in the third as Iowa gave an empty seat a souvenir from their own zone as Grizz is going to get a power play here halfway through the third. As Grizz argued as Iowa tried to lift it out of, out of their own zone and they lifted it out of play. And it looked like for a second the two linesmen and the referee were talking it over and eventually the call was made. Delay of game for Iowa Grizz are going on the power play here. Utah, uh, they've been pretty good on the power play. Obviously, Dylan Fitz scored that power play tally in the second period, and we'll see if they'll tie it up here. Now they're continuing to talk it over as Durflinger, uh, Durflinger looked like he was arguing um, Jake's his first name. Now they're continuing to argue it over. Or, uh, the, they're not arguing, but they're having a conversation, the three officials. Well, it'd be a shame if they changed their mind there from the Grizzlies' perspective as Utah looking for a power play here. They're continuing to talk it over in the far dot of the Iowa zone. Grizzlies look things over. Seems like now everybody's huddled up near the officials. Delay of games the call, but it looks like they're talking it over. As the referee points to neutralize, he changed his mind. Well, hopefully we'll get a replay. I don't know that we'll be able to see either way. Fitz can't believe it. They're going to go to center ice. Um, is it delay of game or not? As the referee goes to center ice, Michael Zyla, Z-Y-L-A. Now, Wesley's going to the referee. Wesley puts his right palm in the air. Wesley says, hey, he threw it out of play. Um, now the officials go on to Ryan Kanaswich. I think they changed their mind. They were going to call delay of game, but after a long conversation, looks like they're going to say it either hit the glass or something like that. I don't think we'll get a replay either way that's going to tell us um, whether they made the right call. We're really not sure if they made the right call. 
The Grizzlies believe they should be on the power play. Fitz can't believe it. As he skates towards the bench, as the Grizz make a line change, Stapley, Gallant, and Burke are out there. So it looked like they were going to call delay of game, but they changed their mind. And unfortunately, we don't have a replay to confirm whether a good call was made or not, because if it was a good call, then uh, then um, so be it. But the Grizzlies think they should be on the power play. Draw is going to be at center ice. We're continuing to skate five on five. As Utah wins the draw, Stapley dumps it in from the left wing. As Jones has a glance off his stick, and it goes to the near corner. Grizz. Over in the offensive zone, far side, as Thomas in the area, Stapley, three Grizzlies, three Heartlanders battle along the far boards. Burke gets tripped up, no call, as Gallant dances around the near side. Gallant near the corner, feeds it to the other side off the screen. Stapley in the area, as Fairbrother gets held up. Now the puck goes to the near circle. It goes back to Fairbrother's along the wall. He falls down on his own. As Iowa chips it ahead, it goes to the point. Heartlanders clear it out to center. Thomas at the Utah blue line gets it. And he moves it ahead as Burke back in the Grizzlies zone will curl, over, curl it over to the left side. Grizz will dump it in from Heartlanders territory, neutralize. Both teams make a line change, less than eight minutes left in the third. As Iowa gets to neutralize, they'll bounce it across Burke and dump it in from neutralize. Yoon, deep in the Grizzlies zone, spins it to the near side as Grizz. Martel, rink wide pass connects to Cutler. Cutler gets it. Left side, rolls it along the wall. Martel on the right point. We'll get it to Yoon over to Texera. Left side, just outside the circle. Texera slides it across, but it exits his own. Yoon gets it back at the Utah blue line. He'll throw it across to Texera, who slides the center ice for Martel. Martel gets it taken away. Goes back to Yoon. Over to the left side, Cutler. Cutler slides it to Yoon, but it glanced off, off a stick and bounces in the slot. As now it goes to Utah. Left side. Grizz, slot, shot, saved by Jones. Rebound goes to Iowa. Heartlanders have numbers. Three on two. Iowa, right side, looks to center it, and it bounced off a of tech share. It stays in the far circle as Kosh throws it up top, picked off by Raby. Raby carries it to center ice left wing, and he'll dump it in. As he'll get off the ice at the end of his shift, Ben Brinkman, who's been a strong defenseman for Iowa this morning. He's a Notre Dame product. He's behind Iowa's net. 6.43 and counting left in the third. As Iowa leads 3-2, to two, Liam Coughlin with the deciding goal on a power play tally earlier in the third. As we are tied at two after two periods, deep in the Grizzlies zone, far corner. Three-on-three three battle. A Grizz player goes down, and it's Mayhew. He gets pushed by Jocks. As it goes back to Utah, Grizz carried out to center. Ice Fitz dumps it in. Messner with good speed chases after it. He gets held up by Lillig. Hunter's his first name as Messner gets the puck. Left circle. As Messner skates towards the point, drops it off for Wesley. Wesley fires a righty shot. And it goes wide as the puck glides along the near boards. Messner, right point, fires towards the net, and it gets blocked by Cameron Nault. Fitz back up top for Messner, right point. Back over across Fitz. Penner behind you, uh, behind Iowa's net. Chips it back to the near side that he vacated. Mayhew up top for Messner, right side, fires a shot. And it goes wide as Fitz was trying to redirect it out in front. Puck glides along the far boards all the way into the Grizzlies zone. Mayhew ahead to Messner. Less than six minutes left. Messner enters from the left side, trying to get it to Fitz. Iowa poked it away as Grizz will get it out to the left side for Stapley. Stapley tried to skate towards the corner. Iowa picked his pocket. Now the Grizz left side, Burke behind the net. Burke tried to chip it out in front to Stapley. Iowa cuts it off. They skate towards the far corner. Now Burke behind Iowa's net gets pushed. Burke gets the puck right side. As he'll fire a lefty shot and it goes wide as he had a tough angle there. As the puck lifts in the air, bounces in front of the crease, and it's taken by Iowa. Liam Coughlin will carry it. Tried to carry it out of his zone. Now he slides into center ice. One on two as Calverly will skate towards the left corner as he dumped it in and he gets it back. He'll throw it back to the opposite corner. Try to get back to Calverly in the near circle. Utah picks it off as Grizz cross center. Fairbrother enters from the left side. He'll skate towards the corner as Fairbrother gets pushed by um, Kozier. And we get a whistle as, I don't know, did they call a penalty there? 456 left in the third. Iowa leads 3-2. to two. We'll find out how this one ends when we come back in 30 seconds after this word from Rio Tinto as Iowa leads Utah 3-2. to two. This isn't just copper. It's our job. It's food on our family's tables. Without it, we couldn't stay in touch. It's what keeps our homes warm and our lights on. It's the power behind the team and a greener, brighter future. This isn't just copper. It's a proud Utah and a strong America. 
Since 1939, America First has helped people start businesses, buy homes and cars, and achieve their financial goals. Today, our top priority is still the financial success of you and your family, which is why we're giving new members $100 when they sign up for a basic savings and checking account, and another $100 when they upgrade to premium checking and enroll in and use direct deposit. So head to AmericaFirst.com today and join the credit union that always puts its members first. Iowa 3, Utah 2 is a Grizz try to make a comeback attempt. In a shootout, Wheeling defeated Toledo 6-5. to five. That game's gone final. That, that one looked like a thriller. Draws going to be in the far circle of the Iowa zone. There's a crowd of 2,252 were in attendance for this one. As Grizz win the draw, Wesley throws to the left side. As looks like Utah's on a power play. As Iowa committed a penalty. Stapley right side across the left. Martel, one-timer saved by Jones. As the netminder's on his backside, but he holds on. As Martell had a good look from the left side, um, looks like Will Calverly got a slashing minor, 15.04 into the third. And so Utah is on a power play right now. Um, so it's going to be critical for the Grizzlies to try to find a way to tie up the game. Utah's one for three on the power play. Iowa's two for three. Cutler will take the draw against Odin Tufto. Cutler wins a faceoff as Wesley will get to Stapley on the right side. Stapley near the boards. Stapley throws it behind his back for Wesley. One-timer saved by Jones. As Iowa wraps it along the near wing boards and clears it out. Less than four and a half minutes left in the third. I think the Iowa player will come out of the box with just over three minutes left in the third. Grizzlies hope it's sooner than that. As Stapley crosses center ice, he skates down the middle, he enters the zone, splits the double team, gets on one knee, and try to drop it off. Iowa clears it out, though. Grizzlies get it at their blue line. As Wesley slides it to center ice for Cutler, right wing chip to Martell. Martell skates towards his left, loses the puck, and gets it back to the Utah blue line. Martell over to cut to Wesley. Wesley crosses center ice. He enters the zone. Wesley skates towards the corner. He avoids a check as McKernan skates to the corner. Wesley chases after it. Puck goes to the left side. Martell up top for Stapley. High slot. Stapley over to Wesley. We're on the captain's seat. Fires towards the net. I oh, got redirected and goes wide as Fitz was in the area. Fitz slides across to Stapley. Stapley centering pass goes wide as he was trying to find Cutler cutting towards the net. As Wesley over to Stapley right side, late in the power play. As Stapley skates towards the near goal line, gets to Cutler over to Martell. One-timer, and it goes wide. I think Jones got a piece of it. As it goes to Cutler, right point. Now to Stapley. Stapley tried to find Cutler cutting towards the net, late in the power play. Martell, left side, skates towards the corner. Drops it back off left point for Wesley. Wesley back to Martell. He's in the left circle. Martell fakes a shot, now fires towards the net wide as Iowa wraps it around the far boards. Wesley chases after it, and it's late in the power play. Iowa might have gotten their guy out of the box. Three minutes left in the third. I think Iowa's back to five on five. As three minutes left in the third, Iowa leads three to two. Burke over at the left circle turns it over. Burke pokes it away as he recovered. Mayhew ahead to Raby, across the center ice. Left wing, now he enters his zone. Tried to chip it in front to Burke. Puck lifted in the air, bounced in the circle, far side. Two-on-two -two battle in the corner. Gallant skates over there to survey. 240 left in the third. Hartlanders lead 3-2. to two. Grizz hacking away, trying to tie up the game. As Gallant over there, puck stays along the wall as Burke tried to escape. Iowa gets the puck, and they'll lift it out to center ice. Puck bounces in the Grizzly zone. Fairbrother gets there as he's being challenged by Boudon as Mayhew, the Grizzlies' first goal scorer. He got the Optum first goal of the game, gets to new tries. Left wing pass, doesn't connect. Iowa skates down the middle, one-on-one. -on -one. They veer off to the left circle. Lefty shot goes wide. About two minutes left in the third as Raby over to Gallant. He dumps it in from the left side as Iowa gets it. They skate around Peyton Jones' net. Jones looking for his fourth straight win as Iowa Carries it across the zone, right side, less than two minutes left. Miner's still in there as Iowa's up by one. Far circle. Grizzlies get it to center ice, looking for Martell. Iowa picked it off. High slot, uh, and they'll throw it to the left circle. Grizz recovers. Burke gets the puck. They'll throw it to the far side. Grizz try to feed it out of the zone, and it re-enters. Iowa gets to the right circle. They chase after it along the far boards. Raby over there with Yoon. One and a half minutes left in the third. Tech Sheriff, Yoon comes out of the pile with the puck. He skates around Utah's net. Miner's still in there. Cutler carries it to New Trice. Miner's probably going to skate towards the bench soon. Cutler over to Martell. Right side, took a shot, and it's blocked off the stick of Kozier and flies out of play. 119 left in the third, but Lisa Grizzlies were able to get an offensive zone faceoff. And I imagine Ryan Kanasiewicz is thinking about using his timeout. 
And we might not be able to see on this stupid feed, but I think Miner will be come off for an extra skater. I say stupid meaning outstanding, of course. Uh, Draw's going to be, there's a dude dressed as a deer. Well, that's it's an interesting look, especially this early in the in the morning. I guess it's 12.53 in the afternoon over in Iowa. Looks like he's having a good time at least. Hopefully he doesn't drive home as he pounds the glass. Um, looks like there's only five for the Grizzlies. Miner must be, still be in there. As Grizz won the draw, Cutler bounces it off a of Heartlander right point. As Wesley now to the left side, throws it to the corner. Stapley over there as well as they clear it out to center. As looks like the Grizz enter from the right side. Wesley dumps it in. One minute left in the third. Iowa leads three to two. Grizz throw it to the far side as Iowa tries to carry it out of the zone. As the Heartlanders throw it to center ice, Cutler gets it. He'll throw it across. Net's empty on Utah's side as Wesley will throw it to Cutler. He's at neutral ice. He crosses center. 45 seconds left. He'll wrap it around the wall as Iowa to the near side. Gets to the right point. Grizz looking to tie it up. Pitts battles along the near side. Stapley rolls it along the wall. Martel far side gets it. 32 seconds left. He rolls it back to the right side. Cutler along the wall. Gets it to Stapley. Grizzly's looking for a good look. A Stapley throws it back to Fitz behind the net. Fitz fanned on passing it towards Martel as Iowa bounces and clears it out. Well, Utah didn't get any shots there of no. Icing is on Iowa with 14 seconds left in the third. Boy, the puck, it seemed like stayed along the wall for about 45 straight seconds. As Utah looking for a shot, but just unable to get one. Uh, 14 seconds left in the third, and it looks like Ryan Kanas, which is going to use his timeout. As he's going to talk things over, as the Grizzlies need to find a way to get that shot, to tr uh, that good look to try to tie it up. Good defensive effort by the Heartlanders, pitching a shutout here so far in the third. We're tied at two going into the third period, and right now the deciding goal is Liam Coughlin, who scored a power play goal 5-27 into the third. 3-2 Heartlanders. Looks like the kids have stayed till the end, and they're all having a good time. Announced attendance, 2,252. Heartlanders, 25 shots. Grizzlies, 21. Utah has a 10-7 shot edge in the third period. Um, we'll see if the Grizzlies can win the face off and find a way to get an open look to try to tie up the game. Iowa leads three to two here in the series opener. Stapley will take the face off for Utah. Can't tell who's taking the draw for Iowa. Six on five, Utah's net's empty. Utah wins the face off, but the linesman says we'll do it over again. Well, the linesman dropped the puck. Utah won it cleanly, but the linesman says, give me, give me the puck. We'll do it again. Draws in the right circle. Stapley will take the draw against Nick Campoli for Iowa. Campoli won gold this evening. Grizzlies win the draw. Mar uh, Mayhew over to Wesley. One timer, and it's blocked into traffic. Iowa clears it out. Seven seconds left. Grizzlies have to reset. They enter with four seconds. Get it to Martell. Take a righty shot. Say by Jones. And he holds on as we get a late whistle, and that will do it. Well, maybe there's gonna maybe they're gonna add some time there as there's about two seconds left when Jones got the puck. And at least the Grizzlies were able to get a good look with Martell as he took the shot from the right side. That was a good look, but Martell, but Jones is able to make the save. They might add some time there as Jones made the save with about two seconds left. So it looks like they'll add some time. Uh, but it's basically one of those when the face off one timer towards Jones kind of plays. 1.8 seconds left in the third. Grizzly's going to have to win the faceoff cleanly towards somebody who's going to fire towards the net. So it'll be a Hail Mary for the Grizzlies. Stapley will take the draw against Liam Coughlin. And now it looks like maybe Iowa's taking their time out as everybody skates towards the bench. So it looks like, barring a miracle, Iowa's going to come away with the victory here in the series opener. First road game for the Grizzlies. As Utah started the season with seven straight home games, and the Grizz went four and three on the homestand. Fans all having a good time. Hopefully everybody on YouTube is able to understand and follow along. As unfortunately, some moments have been tough to describe, but um, you know, we're having a good time here in the Grizz Cave.
Peyton Jones, a former Grizzly goaltender, looks like he's going to get the victory. It will be his fourth straight win. And yeah, I think um, you know Jones wore, I think, 31 as a member of the Grizzlies for two seasons, winning 25 games. Brother of Colorado Rockies outfielder Nolan Jones. Right circle, drop, goes into the boards. That will do it. As Iowa wins 3-2, to two, the only goal scored in the third period was Liam Coughlin on a power play tally. The special teams made the difference. Iowa, two power play goals to the Grizzlies. One as everybody goes to congratulate Peyton Jones as he gets revenge on his former team as he stopped 19 of 21 as the Heartlanders win 3-2. to two. Iowa's record goes to 4-4-2 four, four and two as they've now won four in a row. Grizzlies fall to four and four as they uh, their two game winning streak comes to an end. As we're here in the Grizz Cave watching things, as Grizz can still win the series two games to one, but Iowa gets the series opener. Final score from Extreme Arena is Iowa three, Utah two. Post game show starts in thirty seconds on the Grizzlies radio network. This isn't just copper. It's our job. It's food on our family's tables. Without it, we couldn't stay in touch. It's what keeps our homes warm and our lights on. It's the power behind the team and a greener, brighter future. This isn't just copper. It's a proud Utah and a strong America. Final score from Extreme Arena, Iowa 3, Utah 2. It's the first game this year where the Grizzlies lost after they scored first. They're now 3-1 and one when scoring first. Kyle Mayhew got Utah on the board, 9-51 in. He scored unassisted. That was late after um, a Grizzlies power play. It was a 5-on-5 five five goal, and Mayhew got his third of the year unassisted. That made it 1-0. Um, Utah had a 1-0 lead after one period. Iowa outshot Utah 11-7 in the first period. In the second frame, very few shots on either side. Iowa had seven, Utah had four. Uh, Nick Campoli tied it up as he scored Iowa's first goal of the night, and by night I mean early afternoon. Um, Campoli with his third of the year with Maxime Chaikovich and Kevin McKernan. McKernan, the Iowa captain, gained the assist. Time of that goal, 6-0-1 into the second. Utah took a 2-1 lead as Dylan Fitz scored a power play goal, 11-32 into the second. Brett Stapley and Jordan Martell with the assist. Stapley had the main assist as he was in the right circle, centered it to Fitz, who was all alone, and Fitz's one-timer went past his former teammate, Peyton Jones. Utah took a 2-1 lead. But two power play goals for Iowa made the difference. Davis Kosh tied it up 18-37 into the second with Liam Coughlin and Odin Tufto getting the assist. Score was tied at two after two periods. Um, in the third, the only goal was scored by Liam Coughlin. It was a power play goal, 527 into the third with Louis Boudon, or Boudon getting the assist, and Odin Tufto, who picked up an assist in each of Iowa's two power play goals as the Heartlanders held on for a 3-2 win. Grizzlies did not shoot the Heartlanders 11-7 in the third period. But there in the final minute when it felt like the Grizzlies really needed to find a way to tie the game up, they just couldn't get that, that shot. As the puck ended up along the boards, it seemed like the entire final minute. Um, there was finally a whistle very late in the third period. And with about four seconds, you know, Martell had a good look from the right side that Jones was able to gather and make the save. That's probably the best look the Grizzlies had in the final minutes. So, I mean, that was right there at the end of regulation with about two seconds left. Um, they did stop play with 1.8 seconds, and you know, obviously, it's a very much a long shot after that to get another look off. And the faceoff ended up squirting towards the near boards, and that was really all she wrote. As Iowa holds on for a 3-2 win among the Grizzlies, 22 shots. Mick Messner and Jordan Martell led the way with four. Uh, Dylan Fitz had three shots, including a goal. Uh, two shots for Brett Stapley, Josh Wesley. Um, so those two had two shots and then one shot each for Fairbrother, Yoon, Mayhew. Uh, Mayhew's one shot uh, turned out to be a goal. Cole Gallant, Cutler, Thomas, and Texera each had one shot. Uh, Peyton Jones gets the victory in net. His record goes to 4-2-1 four and uh, four, two and one this year. Uh, he stopped 20 of 22. Uh, Utah's Trent Minor saved 22 of 25. His record falls to 2-3. and three. 
Whereas they're now four and four this season. Iowa has now won four in a row. They are four, four, and two. Well, that's the first road game of the season for the Grizzlies. Last year, Utah went 16, 16, and four away from Maverick Center. And, you know, we just, we tried to describe the game the best we could. Um, it's definitely not ideal circumstances, but um, hopefully everybody that was listening on YouTube was able to understand what was going on. As I'm here in, I guess, what we'll officially call the Grizz Cave. I don't know, Bear Cave kind of sounds better, but uh, I think Grizz Cave kind of personalizes a little bit with the name of the team. I guess Grizz Cave it is, as we got just enough lighting. And I don't know, this background's kind of cool behind me. Um, as uh, uh, we just tried to find a way to describe the game the best we could. Unfortunately, Iowa, you know, they got yellow outline on a black a black jersey with kind of kind of looks like gray numbers. Um, it was very tough to spot when the wide angle was in play. When they went a little bit closer, it was a little bit easier to identify who was who. Uh, but, um, you know, we weren't as personal with the names of the Iowa players as we'd like to be because we just had a tough time spotting the names on the jerseys. Um, you know, the Grizz can still win the series, obviously, but um, there was the game-winning goal they show on Flow Sports. So there was a player leaping. I don't know if Miner really had much of a vision of it. In fact, the two power play goals, you kind of wonder if Miner was able to see it. It was a pretty good shot by Coughlin that went over the right shoulder of Miner. I mean, he earned the goal based on the on that shot. I mean, he, he couldn't have put it any better. Um, and that's the game-winning goal. I, I wonder if Coughlin's going to be the number one star. That's the Davis-Kosh goal. Maybe Kosh was the one that had the guy leaping in front of him. I don't know. It's, it looked like on both the power play goals that um, um, there was somebody screening minor in front, and he wasn't able to get a good vision on those shots. Um, Hartlanders really did a good job poking the puck away and really limiting Utah's scoring chances. Um, obviously, they got a lot of guys we're not really familiar with, but you know, it looked like Ben Brinkman, the Notre Dame product, played a good game. It seemed like Landon Kozier, number forty-four, their defenseman, was active. Um, you know, Coughlin, you know, he celebrates the goal there. That's the game winner. I mean, that was the Kosh one is the one that had the guy leaping in front of him. Coughlin was just a centering pass, and um, there really wasn't a Grizzly to account for him as as Coughlin was able to get everything on a shot. Um, and that, that's the deciding factor in the game. So 3-2 Heartlanders, they come away with the victory. Um, both teams will have a couple days off. You know, all of, obviously, the rest of today and then all of tomorrow. Um, hard to say whether either team is going to get a practice in tomorrow. Um, Friday night will be the uh, middle game of the series. And we want to go over the start times a little bit because it's different for each of the three games of the series. Obviously, tonight, today being a morning game, uh, first morning game the Grizzlies have played since, I believe, February of 2018. Friday's game is going to be a 5.35 start in the Mountain Time Zone, uh, pregame coverage at 5.20, and then the series finale is going to be at 6.05. Now, remember, it was originally going to be a 5.05 start, but the Iowa Hawkeyes play a football game, and because they play a football game, uh, that means that uh, you know the Heartlanders can't play at the same time or close to the same time, so it's going to be... Um, a 7.05 local start in Iowa, 6.05 in the Mountain Time Zone. Um, coverage will begin at 5.50 uh, here on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. And then next week, the Grizzlies will take on the Newfoundland Growlers. Operators are sitting by uh, waiting to take your calls for tickets for that Newfoundland series. Next Grizzlies home game will be next Wednesday, November 22nd, a Bud Light College night against the Newfoundland Growlers. And then obviously both teams will be off for the American Thanksgiving holiday. And then Friday, back Black Friday, it's going to be a 7-10 showdown, middle game of that three-game set between Newfoundland and Utah. A Grizzlies is going to be wearing specialty jerseys for warm-ups uh, on that night. I guess they can't wear them for the game because Newfoundland also wears black. Um, Saturday, November 25th is going to be the series finale. Uh, but make a note, uh, mark it on your calendar, Saturday, December 9th. Gather as many stuffed animals as you can. Because after all, last year we had, what, about 2,200 teddy bears, which was a team record. We want to best that this season. Uh, teddy bear toss and ugly sweater night will be on Saturday, December 9th. So bring your ugly sweater and some teddy bears for the occasion. That's going to be Saturday, December 9th. We want to break that record of teddy bears thrown on the ice, uh, a team record that was set this past season. Uh, and obviously, everybody, bring your ugly sweaters. You know, maybe I'll wear a sweater, and because a lot of my sweaters are ugly, people are going to consider them ugly sweaters. I don't know. Um, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun. I think the one thing we learned about tonight's game, or 
you know, tonight's game obviously being morning slash early afternoon, is watching hockey in the arena is the best thing ever. Uh, make sure to get your tickets at utahgrizzlies.com or call everybody in the Grizzlies office, 801-988-8000. That's 801-988-8000. And uh, get your tickets for the upcoming series at home next week against the Newfoundland Growlers. Early December, Allen's going to be in for a three-game series uh, Wednesday, December 6th, and Friday, December 8th. That's going to be an AFCU Friday. And obviously, we mentioned Saturday, December 9th with the ugly sweaters and the teddy bear toss. Later on in December, the Grizzlies host Idaho on Saturday, December 23rd. And to end the 2023 calendar year, the Tulsa Oilers will be back for their second time this season. They will face the Grizzlies Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, the last three days of the 2023 calendar year. Now about wrap wrap things up here this morning. I guess it's now afternoon. We'll have a post-game lunch, I guess. I don't know what to get. Maybe Carl's Jr. And we'll find another Grizzly sponsor and have that for lunch. I do like that new Carl's Jr. thing. You score four goals, you get fries. You get five goals, you get like a burger. The Grizzlies got two goals this evening. And maybe I'll head to Carl's Jr. for lunch. I did see their dasher, uh, their dasher board right there, their logo on the Maverick Center Ice. And I go there just about every morning for breakfast. And, you know, it shows, but... You can't beat sausage, egg, and cheese biscuits. So I'm going to go to Carl's Jr. for lunch and enjoy some of that. And, um, you know, like I said in the second period, this is probably one of the worst days of my life. But, um, you know, we'll try to bounce back. Luckily, Thursday will be um, an off day, and you know, hopefully I'll recover by Friday evening. Uh, that will wrap things up here as we're in the Grizz Cave here near the Grizzlies team store. I think that's what we'll go with unless we go with something else as the name of this room, I don't know, maybe we'll be in the Grizzlies lobby Friday. I'm not sure. But once again, Kyle Mayhew and Dylan Fitz had Utah's goals, but two power play goals for Iowa ended up making the difference. The game tying goal by Davis Kosh late in the second period, and then Liam Coughlin, 527 into the third period. Time of game, um, two hours and 25 minutes, and in front of 2,252 over at Extreme Arena. Three stars of the game. Peyton Jones is the third star. He stopped 20 of 22. Odin Tufto, two power play assists. He's the second star. And Liam Coughlin with the game winner. Coughlin had one goal and one assist. He is the number one star of the game. It's Iowa three, Utah two. Hope you enjoyed the broadcast, not necessarily the final outcome. I'm Tyson Whiting, and it is what it is. Next broadcast is going to be on Friday night, 550, uh, 520 pregame show, 535 faceoff. This has been the Utah Grizzlies Hockey Network presented by Rio Tinto Kennecott. Everybody have a good afternoon.